So we are live now. Sir, unmute yourself. Sir, unmute yourself. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the session of eye banking and eye donation. As you all know that we are passing through National Eye Donation Fortnight from 25 August uh, of uh, this year to, to uh, 8 September uh, this year. So we have arranged this uh, virtual meet on eye banking and eye donation. And uh, we have with us uh, our president, Dr. Kajal Prasad Ghosh. So before starting our meeting, uh, we want uh, some welcome address by uh, Dr. Uh, one minute, sir. Kajal Prasad Ghosh, sir. Yes. One minute, sir. Is it, is it, is it, is it there? He is uh, the president of uh, Ophthalmological Society of West Bengal. So, Dr. Kajal Prasad Ghosh, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Indranil. So, uh, uh, well, uh, I feel really delighted to speak on this August gathering, especially when Swamod is chairing the session. You know, my dear friends, organ transplantation, organ transplantation is a priceless gift of one human being to other, a renewed life. In this, it is the best legacy one can leave behind in the event of death. Unfortunately, we do not have enough people volunteering for this organ, organ donation, including eye donation. It is important, therefore, to spread awareness about the value of eye donation and its role in saving a personal, in saving a person's sight. Eye donation involves donating the cornea, a clear tissue in front of the eye that lets the light so one can see. That letting the light, the simple part of the eye is extremely important for thousands of corneal transplantations a year. Sometimes a called a keratoplasty or a corneal graft, a corneal transplant could give someone back the gift of sight. Corneal Transplant usually have a very good chances of success over 90%. Corneas can be donated up to 24 hours after one dies. However, the sooner the donation takes place, the better the transplant outcome. Any person, no matter age, can donate a cornea. People need cornea transplantation for quite a number of reasons, including disease and injury that has made cornea cloudy or distorted, causing vision loss, scarring of the cornea of the infection such as corneal ulcer, keratoconus, the thinning of the cornea, either an inherited condition that may, lead, that may lead to cloudiness of the cornea in some people, scarring caused by heart piece, etc. A corneal transplantation make a lasting difference of people's life and a relatively quick procedure with high rate of success. Unfortunately, there is scarcity of cornea donors. It is important imperative, therefore, to make a strategic intervention by the medical community, the government and the non-government organization to raise awareness, to create a sustainable sources of donor cornea and strengthen eye banking system and procedures to training and research. Let us encourage more and more people to come forward to donate cornea and create a lasting vision for their human, for their fellow human beings. We have here in this webinar most erudite speakers and chairperson who, who are known nationally and internationally. And with their views on this subject, I'm confident that the listeners of this webinar will be immensely benefited. With these few words, I hand over to Indonil, moderator of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your nice description. So we want to start uh, our program. Before starting, we have with us uh, respected Dr. Shomor Kumar Basak, sir, is the chairperson, co-chairperson, and another co
Court Chair Professor Dr. Uh, uh, Asim Kumar Ghosh, sir. So, one minute. Uh, is it visible, no? Dr. Asim yes, Kumar Ghosh, is one of the co-chair person here. He is MD, DNB, FRCS, Director of Dishai Hospitals. Medical Director, Cornea and I Bank Services, past President, I Bank Association of India. And we have also Dr. Asim Kumar Ghosh, sir. He is MBBS, DO, MS, Director, RIO, Kolkata, undergraduate and postgraduate teaching, teacher for last 26 years. Veterinal Chief, RIO, Chief Ophthalmic Advisor, Government of West Bengal, Department of Health and Family Welfare, expert of MCQs for NEET PG entrance exam appointed by National Board of Examinations, Delhi. We have with us very vibrant co-moderator, Dr. John Sarkar, uh, his consultant, Sushru Thai Foundation and Research Center, Kolkata, MBBS, DOMS, FMRF, Cornea from Sankar Nathralai, Chennai, ex associate consultant, SN Chennai, Kolkata, multiple scientific papers, posters in various national and state conferences, multiple scientific presentations, as a national faculty, three international presentations, and uh, second in best paper presentation, Cornea Society of India, best surgical video winner, OTSI 2020, third in surgical video of cataract surgery in DOS. So I am handing over to Dr. John Sarkar to start the program. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, a very good evening. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, audible. A very good evening to all my respected uh, teachers, my seniors and my friends. And today, we in the eve of the idolation fortnights, today we are here with us, the Doyen of Ophthalmology, Shambhar Bashak, sir, in presence of our director of the Araya Kolkata, uh, that is Ashim Ghosh, sir, most beauty friendly teacher, and be with us with the Radhika Dattaraja, madam. So, corneal blindness is a major one of the leading cause of blindness in India, like other developing countries. As per the WHO, the coronal blindness approximately 8 million people are unilateral blind, coronal blind, among the 1 million are bilaterals. And the number was reached to approximately 10.4 million over the year of 2020. And each year is approximately 20,000 to 25,000 patients are added. So it's a burning problem. So this idolation fortnight is the augmentation of the acceleration of the motivational to the program where we will discuss and nicely fit the program in such a way that we will serve the purpose of the practical issues of the eye banking, eye collection, eye donation, and the practical issues of how to handle the patient when it comes to you, which cover that this book, because this program is a pan-Bengal, not in the pan-Bengal program, we try to make it the program as a pan-India program. Here with us from the Shankar Nethala Chennai, from NR Madam to also to make it a good anastomosis of the learning uh, from the, your madras to your, that is a part of the enter whole Bengal to also. So we have a vibrant speakers today. We cover the nice topics by the with the and it's covered by the guided by the our vibrant discussion also. We have an expert panelist to also. So I have a hand over to over to you, sir. Introduce sir, over to you. Can you just introduce our expert panel? Uh, hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, I am uh, sharing. Sure, yeah. One sure. moment. One moment, please. Yeah. We have, we have with us. Uh, uh, Dr. Anil Kumar Ghata, uh, panelist, eminent panelists are there. Uh, he is an assistant professor at Murshidabad Medical College, MBBS, MS, trained in. So excuse me, make it full, full. Sir, yeah. Trained, uh, trained on eye banking and cornea transplantation, surgeries, Sri Shankar Deva Nectralai, Guwahati. Experiences of more than 1,000 corneal transplantation surgeries at RIU Kolkata and Uttar Pradesh Eye Bank. We have with us Dr. Asim Kumar Seal, you all know him. He's MBBS DODNB from Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai, MSc, distinction with distinction in community eye health from ICEH, University of London, head Nethrodema Niketan, Eye Hospital Vivekananda Mission Ashram. And he had got multiple awards, including CSSMA awards, Arkadas awards. I'm not going in details. 
and he is the editorial board member indian journal of ophthalmology community eye health journal south asia edition we have with us dr keshav haldar he is consultant eye surgeon working in kolkata rnsn eye care and research center cfs and ink is md from ams senior resident in pornia ams uk nhs 2000 to 2005 we have with us dr sayon das he is mbbs ms pgi mer frcs rcps glasgow trained at sch lahan nepal cornea observer orbis flying eye hospital 2013 consultant cornea cataract and anterior segment services renupai institute west bengal experiences uh, in corneal surgery refractive surgery cataract surgery multiple presentations and publications in national and international levels review are evaluated in bjo and aiuc faculty pg training dnb cornea fellowship in cataract surgery we have also with us dr archana khetan as a panelist she is a, she is a mbbs ms consultant cornea and refractive services the amgo the billa arvind eye hospital kolkata working experience is last 15 years we have also with the doctor uh, doctor aditya pradhan is mbbs dnb fico mna ms mrc acd fellowship in cornea disai hospital research fellowship lbpi hyderabad consultant cornea and external disease disai hospital kolkata he has got multiple awards and is a reviewer of igo cornea ocular immunology information sector editor and special interest in infectious keratitis allergic eye diseases corneal transplantation dry eye disease and corneal tattooing so uh, we have with us uh, dr radhika notarajan ma'am he she is having some urgency so we have to go for her keynote address first so i am uh, hand over to uh, dr giving hand to dr uh, john sarkar please uh, uh, introduce her and then we can so that we can go for yes sir can you please share the slide sir am i audible yeah yeah uh once again good evening to all of you it's my great pleasure on the behalf of oswb and the community of thomas subcommittee uh here we are from the bottom of our heart we are welcome our keynote address the guest speaker dr adhika nadarajan madam she is the deputy director of the department of uh, cornea and the external diseases and head of the department of teaching and training shankar netral chennai she has done mbbs diploma in ophthalmology dnb and fsc in edinburgh she has a 24 year experience and she had long time she has been attached with shankar netral eye and the chennai she has lot multiple publications national she is a national and international speaker and in spite of her, and she is one of the favorite in her madam i think not only me i hear a lots of students of ma'am said that from all of us on behalf of the west wb me dr mona dr shimana dr shimanto all of us <laughs> blessed by the ma'am's nice teaching so from all bottom of all of us heard ma'am welcome you in this nice academic fest uh, over to you ma'am Thank you so much, uh, John. I'm really overwhelmed by all that affection, and equally overwhelmed to see so many of our uh, alumni on this uh, panel, along with uh, such seniors. So, uh, first of all, thanks to uh, Dr. Indranil Dev. Uh, thanks to uh, John Sarkar and all our alumni over here. Thanks to uh, the Ophthalmic Society of West Bengal, and uh, my special warm regards to Dr. Samar Basak. um and i'm really glad at uh, being over here so um to put you in a listening mood for this evening i'm going to start with a short story two friends were walking along a beach so they spotted at a distance an old man throwing some pebbles into the sea under the hot afternoon sun intrigued they went near him and they saw that they were not pebbles they were a lot of uh, starfish which had washed ashore on the beach and uh, the old man was taking them one by one and restoring them back into the sea so one of them uh, asked the man grandpa uh, you are doing such a wonderful job no doubt but look at all the creatures out here do you think it's really worth it how much will you be able to do so the man stopped and smiled at them and then said look 
look at the area where I have cleared. It has been worthwhile for all those creatures. And he pointed to the starfish in his hand and said, it is going to be worthwhile for this one too. So that, my dear friends, is the spirit of any service. That one person alone cannot do everything, but every little bit adds and contributes. And iBanking is no exception to that. I'm Radhika from Shankar Nitralia. I do not have a presentation with me because iBanking is not a PowerPoint. It is a passion. iBanking is not uh, is an emotion. It is not an Excel sheet from which we read out statistics like, you know, there are 7 million corneal blind people in India, even though that is in fact a truth. And 1 million of this 7 million corneal blind people are bilaterally blind. And the startling fact is that 20,000 more are added to this bandwagon every year. But what is sad is more than half of these people have either preventable or treatable causes of corneal blindness. So um, uh, suppose uh, we had a car in which the windshield was shattered and the engine was working. Will we leave it in the junkyard? No, we will not do. So these people are walking around blind because uh, you know, the retina and optic nerves are functioning nicely, but you know, the cornea is not allowing them to see. So if that is going to be a cautious and careful approach to an automobile, why will we be any more careless with precious human eyesight? So let us look at where we are now. We have in our country about 240 odd eye banks. It is uh, a known fact that India is home to one of the largest number of eye banking institutions in the world, not in Asia, but in the world. And 240 is a staggering number, but what is more staggering is that there are 740 affiliates to this, meaning to say that there are 740 institutions which can uh, function independently or in association with a parent institution in eye banking. So that is the resource that is the kind of resource that we have. And voluntary eye donation has always been the mainstay of source of tissues for us. Been there from time immemorial. And it is a self-serving and a self-running program which runs by word of mouth and forms the substantial contribution to eye donation in the country. But the small problem that we face with VED, as we call it now, is that life expectancy in our country is going on increasing. So the voluntary donations that we get are from older and older donors. So sometimes the tissue quality is not as great as we would like them to be. So on the other hand, we have the younger HCRP or the Hospital Cornea Retrieval Program, which has been running very well for a few decades now. Uh, comparing it with VED, HCRP gives us younger tissues because these are from hospital deaths. But then SPRP is a little more expensive because it needs a little bit of infrastructure and you know grief counseling in place and everything. And sometimes hospital patients may come with uh, you know their own share of problems like infection or exposure on the eye, as well as uh, you know having severe infections in the body which may preclude tissue utilization. Also, we have this disparity between whole globe and in-situ retrieval, and each of them has got their pluses. Whole globe uh, has the plus point that we get clearer along, but then it requires quite often trained medical people to do that. In situ can be done by trained technicians, but then we don't have the scleral resource that we get from a whole globe extraction. There's a little bit of discrepancy as far as storage media is concerned from Asia to the West, because we rely more on MK medium and use a bit of optisol. Whereas in the US, it is more of optisol and in Europe, it is almost always organ culture. Why? Because we have shorter waiting lists. We have patients who need urgent transplants. So uh, we need shorter uh, working storage media. Whereas in the Western world, infections are very rare. And, uh, you know, therefore, uh, they have a longer waiting list for elective surgeries. And therefore, they use uh, uh, organ culture uh, media. So this is where we stand at uh, this point of time. So what is there for us to do to take it uh, forward a bit? I'm really not going to talk about, you know, charters and programs and, you know, great infrastructures or consortium because that is not the language that I understand. What in my mind will be a plan is something that we do in our daily lives and daily practices, which can be integrated or enhanced a little bit 
you know, to make an existing thing run better. You may or may not be in the same page as I am, but please hear me out. So uh, to increase the validity of iBanking, we have to first increase the utilization. There's no point in saying we want more and more when we are not actually using what we have in our hand. So a few simple ways to do that would be starting from screening. So screening uh, and discarding for medical indications, unfortunately, has to be done because those tissues are harmful for the patient. But small points that can be kept in mind are that sometimes when the tests are done in a little delayed manner, that can influence the result or the outcome of the test. For example, how many of us know that keeping the sample for a longer time can yield a HCV positive response? So these are small things that we need to learn for ourselves to prevent unnecessary wrong interpretation and which can lead to unnecessary discarding of the tissues. Likewise, the standard norm is that within six to eight hours, the donor eye has to be retrieved. But then we also know that when the patient or the eye is kept in a little cooler condition, for example, in mortuaries, then the usage or the extraction can go on up to 12 hours also. Going, scaling up one step more over and above these simple tips, the most important thing that we need to do to enhance the efficiency of eye banking is resource matching. Do we need eye banks in India? We just saw that we have the maximum number. We don't need them at all. So what seems to be lacking is the overlap between eye bank facilities and the availability of donor corneas for uh, donation, donors for donation. So wherever the overlap is lacking, we need to bring about a structure which can integrate people who are willing to donate to people who can uh, retrieve the donation. So in this day and age, it's going to be very much easy to do this with the help of say simple computer programs or you know uh, uh, AI uh, methods. Think about it. If Swiggy or Zomato can identify people who are hungry, can identify shops or restaurants which provide food and provide service people who can link the two, then uh, how easy or difficult will it be for us to identify the donor, the donation with the surgeon and the patient? It should be possible to do this. Think of this idea. What if we had an iBanking app? If we had an iBanking app in which we give the public basic principles of eye donation in an engaging fashion, okay, not as a lecture or anything, in an engaging fashion, put a little legal limitation in it so that, you know, people don't uh, misuse it in uh, any way and throw it open in uh, the social media for youngsters to, you know, propagate it. I think sooner or later, it will become a super hit method to uh, enhance the process of uh, eye banking. And we have, you know, so many portals of online shopping and OTT platforms which have run smoothly for us to get the uh, inspiration from. Also, this is the day and age of uh, compartment corneal surgery. So we know that a single cornea can be utilized for anterior lamella keratoplasty and endothelial keratoplasty. And we have wonderful surgeons here on this panel uh, headed by Dr. Basak who have demonstrated, to that, uh, demonstrated this to us in uh, various uh, platforms. Again, um, going up one more level, if we get fresh uh, donor, we can use the limbal tissue also for uh, allograft uh, transplant under immunosuppression to a patient who has got a burn problem on the ocular surface. So one cornea, in theory, can be used for anterior posterior keratoplasties as well as for alloslet. So this may not happen every time, but we need to emphasize or impress upon the learning surgeons these possibilities so that in their practice, when they go out, they are a little more frugal with the tissue or the resource that they are able to uh, procure. And speaking of learning surgeons, not a single tissue that has got should be wasted because this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, not only precious, but uh, it is non-renewable resource which has been, uh, you know, taken from a, a person who lived earlier. So we have no business to waste it at all, except for those which need to be discarded for contraindication reasons. Even the tissue that cannot be used for surgery has to be made sure to be used for wet lab and teaching and training and suturing practice, etc. And if it is one level worse or it has been already used for this, then it can be given to uh, institutions for research purposes because we have a lot of corneal research on the front of, you know, a limbal stem cell culture and corneal tensile strength assessments going on. So every bit of tissue can theoretically be used for all these purposes. 
coming back to the topic of compartment corneal surgeries, there have been a lot of workshops and webinars on DALC as well as endothelial keratoplasty. This is because in the Western world, keratoconus and uh, corneal decompensation because of uh, fugues largely and a little bit because of PBK seem to form a bulk of the diseases among patients. It is very good for us to imbibe those methods and learn and uh, you know uh, uh, translate it into our clinical practice as well. But what we should not forget is that we have a fair share of total corneal opacities. We have a lot of patients who have become blind because of infection, because of injury, males, malnutrition. In fact, therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty seems to be the maximum uh, done surgery as far as keratoplasty is concerned in India. So eye banking should parallelly concentrate on training people, especially the newly developing surgeons in holistic keratoplasty and therapeutic keratoplasty in particular. On one hand, if we want to develop a therapeutic keratoplasty skills in these people, on the other hand, we also need to look at alternatives for uh, corneal tissue usage, if not for now, in the future. Like, for example, bioengineered cornea or, you know, AI methods which can help corneal blind patients to, uh, you know, see because of uh, computer vision rather than because of corneal grafting. This may sound very far-fetched at this point of time. And uh, when computers were developed, when IBM brought about the very first computer, it was a tall machine housed in a you know, big chamber, very expensive. So the chief of IBM at that point, because of the time and energy it consumed, famously remarked that probably there is market for five more of these devices if we manufacture. And he couldn't have been more wrong because we have all of our devices in our pockets and on our desk running with a computer at this point of time. So what seems to be science fiction or far-fetched at this point of time may become standard of care in the future. So training of surgeons in basic methods and also investing in technological alternatives to corneal tissue may work well if done parallelly with eye banking. And as far as awareness is concerned, awareness is not something that, you know, we suddenly remember during a fortnight and we speak talking about. These kind of programs are very important because we remind ourselves about the job at hand and how much it is done. But awareness is something that is done at a micro level by each of us during our daily work. So there is a group of people that we can influence our peers, our students, our subordinates, sometimes even our seniors. So if we keep talking this repetitively, then at some point of time, even though they may not be listening at that time, it will come to the forefront of their minds. We've had elders when we were growing up tell us a lot of things, you know, in our uh, younger days, we may not have even listened to them properly. But when a situation comes in our life, promptly that advice comes back to our mind. The same thing can happen. And if we have influenced even one person to act towards the cause of eye banking while we have counseled 10 people, it still becomes worth the effort. And motivation is not only for uh, the general public. Motivation is also for the eye banking personnel. Although patient information is always held confidential, it will do a lot of good if we keep motivating the eye bank personnel by telling them what the patient results have been. So uh, no amount of uh, you know, promotion or increment can match the satisfaction that a worker gets when he or she learns that somebody is seeing because of their effort. We are the link between the patient and the people at the eye bank and some amount of positive reinforcement will go a long way in making them better. And when we talk about message to the public, it should not be just general statements because general public are not aware of the program from end to end. There are two or three important messages that we have to get across to the public. What are they? That a pledge is a very nice thing. A pledge is something that makes oneself and more importantly, people around, somebody takes a pledge, the whole family or the whole office knows about it. So excellent modality of propaganda. But sometimes people think that when pledge is not, the donation cannot happen. So pledge is only an awareness part, the propaganda part, but person can still donate even if pledge has not taken place. The second thing that public needs to know is that a person need not have will desire to be donated, that the next of kin agrees to it, then the donation can be possible. This is something that many people don't know or not aware of. And the third message should be aimed at removing all the stigmata and taboo 
towards eye banking, like, you know, person will not be born with eyes in the next birth or it delays or disfigures the body and things like that can be uh, addressed. So these two or three important messages, if they can be propagated by social media at low or no extra cost, then that is a service that we have done uh, towards uh, eye banking. Long-term preservation is not required in our country because we have uh, uh, you know, no indication to have it and is very expensive. But if one thing the COVID pandemic has taught us is that we do not waste tissue. So any tissue, therapeutic tissue, which cannot be utilized can be put in glycerol. And we know that that kind of long-term preservation, even though it makes the cornea acellular, can come in handy in times of an uh, emergency. And as far as demand versus supply is concerned, uh, we've already spoken about that problem earlier. Increase in technical training can help a little bit. If there are remote parts where medical people are not able to go and retrieve tissue, if there are trained technicians, they can bridge the gap and they can help the tissues to be brought back to the main center or to the eye banking area. And a couple of last points is that if we have a centralized place where all the data is registered, how many eye banks, how many people, what is the infrastructure, what are the donations, what is the utility, and if we are able to look at it year after year, much in the way like you know the budget happens or the income tax collection happens, then that will be a formidable asset for us to work with to increase or enhance the process of eye banking. Okay, nicely said, but uh, is it going to be that easy? Now we will look after all the incidentals in this. I think we have a solution at hand. We have many multinational companies which are in charge of producing drugs and instruments and whatnot for medical use, especially ophthalmic use. If there can be a guideline from the government or a law from the government that each of these companies in their own small or big way, depending on their size, can handhold one eye bank for a, an year for certain activities, then not only will it give the necessary shot in the arm for these eye bankers to do their uh, work better, but it will also help to solve or serve the uh, corporate social responsibility that these companies will anyway have to fulfill. So it is a win-win situation for um, everybody. So um, eye donation is probably one of the easiest donations that can happen. Why? Because we don't need a living patient. We don't need the patient to be brain dead. We don't need uh, qualified medical people to go and uh, retrieve the tissue. Retrieval it does not have to happen in a hospital. We don't need the police to clear a green channel for the organ to be transplanted. We don't have to have the recipient waiting readily. So there are so many privileges compared to other kind of you know organ donations that makes eye donation among the simplest of donations to happen. When that is the case, it is really pathetic if we allow eyes to be buried or burned after death. It does not require any extra or exquisite effort. Like I said, it only needs harnessing of existing infrastructure and efforts to make this bigger and better. And we are the corneal surgeons who are the fortunate handlers of this exquisite piece of tissue. So we are the people who are fit to lead this momentum by example. And if anybody has been touched with any point or any idea through the course of this talk, you are more than welcome to track back so that we can provide assistance or handholding to take any of this further. Thank you so much, all of you. Thanks once again for having me here. Thank you very much, ma'am, uh, for your world-class enlightening talk. And uh, ideal was well bound. I was just, as if we are sitting in the corner grand down in a video, Swami. All the that as a <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I just would like to say, does uh, Bashak sir, you want to add something? Radhika has covered uh, excellent. Uh, I mean, she has covered all aspects of eye donation. And also, the she reminds the duty of duty and responsibility of corneal surgeon. That is the best part, and we should uh, get uh, learn from uh, them that how the things are going smooth and forward. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks for your uh, talk, uh, Professor Ashim Go, sir. Uh, sir, would you like to something? 
your worst experience in i banking in the rio no, kolkata no, it is it is a very good uh, lecture that has been delivered by madam so that uh, um, we have also i bank but we have government service it is not being uh, maintained in such a way that the madam has uh, spoken but still it is the definitely it is very valuable uh, information and a report that has that goes to the uh, pgts our pgts should follow it and also the other corneal faculties should follow it thank you very much madam please thank you sir thank thanks thank you so much over to you indranil sir anybody from the panel dr ronil ghata sir work in periphery also uh, it is very very important issue i i am very much enlightened with the speech of madam radhika and uh, rajan madam so i am uh, agree with her that uh, we need to increase the uh, increase the dedicated number of dedicated and younger younger corneal surgeon throughout india so that we can fulfill our demand our requirement thank you madam thank you everybody thank you ma'am thanks anybody from the panel any other want to say it is uh, nice to see you man to hear from you regarding uh, banking and all these things basically it is a joint venture i think uh, from all the levels is very essential for good coordination is very essential to uh, get the achievement thank you madam thank you very much thank you very much for your uh, kind presence and so john yeah ma'am i think you have some uh, urgency urgent meeting there yeah, so. i have a commitment so i shall take leave but it was really wonderful to be with all of you and like i said outside this platform if we can really translate one or more of these ideas then uh, uh, all the better and uh, you know uh, welcome on that front thank you so much again thank you thank you thank you ma'am ma thanks for your uh, this nice interesting talk and we are very happy that you come to join with us in spite of busy schedule ma'am thank you very much ma'am now thank you so john now, uh, yeah we'll just yeah. move to the, our main program uh, we have a nice scientific program uh, this is plan such a way that you cover the how to do the improve the, our i banking how to the your enhance the program of the collection uh, that reservation of the i so we have a nice vibrant speaker so uh, it, it's nice to just introducing our fast talk uh that is the corneal tribal hospital versus community program we have a young energetic surgeon that aditya bajaj uh that aditya has done the dnb do diploma in ophthalmology and i first glasgow and he has done the consulting he is now the working as a consultant disha eye hospital shiliguri and she the more than successful 100 corneal transplantation done in shiliguri from 2015 to 2017 and her, his interest in cornea and the cataract surgery over to you aditya thank you thank you sir Discussant is there, Doctor John. Sir, yeah, yes, sir. Over to you, sir. For introducing Jayant Jayanto. The topic uh, this will be discussed by Doctor Jayanto Jato. Uh, he is MBBS MS Associate Professor and Head of the Department, Purulia Government Medical College. Yes, sir. Senior Resident in Cornea and Diffusion Surgery, Arayu Kolkata. Ex Chief by Bank, Arayu Kolkata. In La Lamellar Cornea Surgery from Disai Hospital. So, Dr. Aditya Bajaj. So, we'll welcome to both of you, Aditya. Over to you, please start. Yes, I'll share the screen. Is it visible? Uh, not yet, Aditya. Yeah, it's coming. Make it full screen, please. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. John Sarkar, for the kind introduction. Thank you, OSWB and Dr. Indranil Dev for inviting me for the talk. So my topic is cornea retrieval, HCRP versus voluntary. So uh, these are some figures which we have already discussed right now. So around six point eight million people are cornea blind in India. That is vision less than six by sixty. Out of that, one million are approximately bilaterally blind. and out of that 10% may be curable by keratoplasty and probably we are 
adding every year 40 to 50000 new patients every year and now this year it may be almost 10.6 million cornea blind so why do we need strong eye banking i think we have all seen this site life uh, graphic which shows the cornea blind estimates and cornea transplant readiness of the world this is a world map so we can see that the first world countries like the U usa and the, the the australia they are shown in very small size whereas india and africa are huge so this means we are ready for cornea transplant and the we have huge cornea blind numbers so we need to perform almost 100000 keratoplasty per year from this year onwards and at 50% utilization we need collection of almost 200000 corneas per year so uh, in 2013 14 out of 10.2 million deaths we have collected approximately 0.5% of tissue so if we have a goal of 100000 transplants then we need uh, 100000 per year consenting donors and so we need 1% of uh, uh, 1% of total deaths to be converted to donation and during the pandemic year 11668 corneas have been collected i bank collects cornea in two ways first is voluntary and next is the other is hcrp that is hospital cornea retrieval program the voluntary call can be uh, with a prior pledge or without pledge so upon i donation calls are received directly from donor families or any voluntary organization now the, once the i bank receives the call the initial information of the deceased is recorded in donor call initial information sheet and the i bank staff then gives following instructions to the donor family that is eye should be closed properly fan should be switched off head should rest on a pillow and you can put an ice cube or wet cotton over the closed eye one photocopy of death certificate should be made available and following information are then taken from family member that is name age and sex of the donor time time of death and provisional cause of death name of caller relation and contact number and address with the nearest landmark next type is hospital cornea retrieval program in this i donation counselors are posted at hcrp centers so prova i bank it is rg cor medical college br singh hospital railway hospital and jnm hospital for hcrp collection their job is to look out for death certificate arriving at central ward masters office or ward and upon arrival of such a certificate the family members of the deceased are called to the uh, central ward and motivated to donate cornea in case the family members agree the counselors with technician proceed to retrieve the tissue accordingly and collect the blood sample from the donor so it is essentially hcrp is essentially a public partnership a public private partnership model between i bank and a large government hospital the key is the direct motivation of family members of the deceased actively by professionally trained counselor that is i donation counselor in a hospital setting where the death rate is high so they approach the family members in hospital immediately after death of family's loved one brief them about i donation and then request for giving consent for donation with help and support for all level of hospital staff the consent rate can be anywhere between 5 to 65% currently more than 25 i banks in the country have adopted this concept and with the help of central and state government more than 50 hcrp centers can be done across the country now there are certain uh, contraindications we all know this list just for completion i will say that tissue from donors uh, which is to be avoided which can be potentially hazardous to the eye bank personnel that is active viral hepatitis uh, aids or hiv active viral encephalitis ck uh, creutzfeldt jakob disease suspected rabies or person who within the past 6 months was bitten by an animal suspected to be infected with rabies there are certain contraindications for transplant so death of unknown cause uh, then there is progressive neuro degenerative disease of unknown etiology which can be uh, the list is exhaustive it is not limited to but they include multiple sclerosis alzheimers disease parkinsons and parkinsons like disease any type of dementia which excludes which is apart from cv and brain tumor or head trauma active meningitis that may be viremia or bacteremia or tubercular etiology active viral encephalitis of unknown origin also So active septicemia at the time of death these tissues can also not be uh, utilized so there are def set definitions for this and the, the there are other active systemic viral diseases like chikungunya active h1n1 influenza and active dengue fever also are contraindications active viral hepatitis congenital rubella active miliary tuberculosis and leprosy also 
there are certain non communicable diseases which can go from the donor to the recipient potentially the, there are certain intrinsic eye diseases like active ocular and intraocular inflammation like conjunctivitis keratitis choroiditis retinoblastoma malignant tumors of the anterior segment known adenocarcinoma in the eye of primary or metastatic origin snake bites which are specific for neurotoxin one important thing is that poisoning drowning hanging snake bite burn road traffic accident these are medical legal cases these are not actually contraindication but in our state noc has to be taken from the local police station and the forensic department we consult also the concerned physician if required and in difficult cases we can keep the tissue in quarantine for 24 to 48 hours to see the change in the color of the preservative media donor cornea retrieval is not denied even if the time since death is more than 6 hours in case the body is preserved in the mortuary the cornea can be retrieved then beyond the stipulated time also there are certain pre recovery uh, review and donor preparation the expiry dates on the sterile kits have to be checked all the essential supplies have to be packed in a steel bin which has then to be transported to the donor site in addition technicians also have inoculation set and mk media at their homes for immediate retrieval to avoid wastage of time so that they don't have to travel to the hospital for collecting this so uh, uh, consent is very important in this so ensure the documentation of consent is consistent with the ministry of law and justice the the transplantation of human organ and tissue act the thoa and ensure that the consent has been obtained from the correct individual according to the state law that is from the next of kin and near relative and two witnesses which are required to sign the form donation of corneas cannot proceed unless legal authority to remove tissue is established under these regulations so who can give consent near tissue near relative means spouse either parents adult son or grand adult son or daughter adult brother or sister grandfather grandmother adult grandson or granddaughter power of attorney or legal guardian they also can give the consent ensure that the consent clearly authorizes recovery of the specific tissue for which the recovery is planned like if if it is whole globe you have to write whole globe if it is corneal scleral button then it has to be mentioned ensure that the consent is also given for authorization to obtain blood specimen for screening of the uh, these diseases four diseases which we do ensure photocopy of the death certificate then we have to look at the donor medical history in case it is a hospital uh, death then pre hospital care records are uh, required uh, within 48 hours of death and there are certain relevant records that is donor history input output sheet medications lab results vital signs imaging and diagnostic procedure results there are certain non relevant records like dietary consults ecg print out these are not contributing to the donor eligibility review of hard copy of hospital record also does not need to be documented complete medical history in donor information sheet has to be noted and complete hemodilution form if necessary has to be acquired so then comes the identification of the donor you have to match the name on the consent form to the name on the donor's id tag toe tag or bracelet the person who gives consent should identify the donor do not presume the identity of the donor or rely on a nurse or morgue attendant to point out the donor institutional staff shall also participate in documentation of the above steps taken to confirm the id of an untagged body Now identify then we have to identify a proper work site it cannot be done in front of too many people so identify a suitable work workplace counter space near the donor on which to set up your paperwork and sterile pills you have to clean this area with suitable disinfectant and wipe it dry with paper towels and you have to wear disposable cap mask and gloves So I will just share a short video. This is a Kutsi Prova Eye Bank. So I'll just skip this video. There's uh, some steps. So the corneal scleral button is usually collected and directly preserved in the media, and or sometimes the whole globe is also collected and preserved in the moist chamber. so we need these instrument boxes as i have already said the ice the ice box and the steel bin for the thing and all these instruments have to be sterilized like we uh, do in case of a in in case of an or the following instruments are also required like antibiotic drops for weeding while sterile while for collecting of blood sterile gloves and these are the following instruments required for the scleroconeal button excision So the process starts with the consent given by the donor family. 
and then the protective eyewear has to be worn by the uh, eye bank staff. A pen, a torchlight examination is then done. The exposed areas are looked for any exposure, any insects, any obvious abnormalities. Then, ten percent povidone iodine is used to clean this area. The eyelids are clean. Sorry. The eyelid margins are then also clean. Both the upper and lower lid margins are clean. The eye bank personnel then dons the gloves, the sterile gown, like we do in uh, the operation theater. It is not, we have to understand this is not a completely aseptic procedure, but we take maximum precaution not to contaminate the uh, tissue further. So draping is done. Instruments are laid out. Then the speculum is placed. The 360 degree conjunctival peritomy is done. Once it is done, then we scrape off some of the uh, uh, tissue. Then we take a 16 mm uh, trefine. To, we don't use the trefine to cut through. It is just a template marking. Then we enter, we make a partial scleral groove and then entry with a number 11 blade. <laughs> and then we introduce the corneal scissors to cut 360 degree along the template marking. While cutting, we have to make sure that we, there is no aqueous leak at that stage. At this time, then, then the corneal button is gently separated from the underlying uveal tissue. And this is when there is a Gush of aqueous. Care is taken not to injure the uveal tissue or cause any vitreous prolapse. This is gently separated and directly then this is placed into the tissue preservative media. Same is repeated for the other eye. And then we place a scleral shield to prevent the extrusion of the intraocular contents. 10 ml of blood is collected here. Here it is being collected from the jugular vein. This is mandatory. It is transferred for serology test in the vials. We have to make sure that we don't leave any instruments or any disposable uh, instruments in the vicinity. Then we pay last respects to the departed soul, and then we thank the family. This is just a short video. So after recovery, as I said, we have to rewrap all the instruments. We have to place a biohazard level on the contaminated packs. We have to clean the area with disinfected solution. And we have to give the uh, uh, a, a badge, a donor badge. And then finally, we thank the donor family before leaving. Blood sample is uh, there, which is collected. It has to be screened for HIV 1 and 2, HBS, EG, HCV and syphilis uh, for syphilis. Never draw the blood stream, uh, blood, uh, blood downstream from an IV site to avoid hemodilution. Draw blood only from intact vessels and angle the needle in the same direction as the vessel uh, to avoid puncturing all the way through the vein. So jugular vein is uh, easily accessible. Subclavian vein can also be used, but cardiac puncture shall not be done on a coroner's or medical examiner's case, except when specific permission for cardiac puncture has been taken. It is understood that sometimes it is not possible to obtain a proper blood sample, but we have to make every possible effort because without that, uh, the tissue is simply not suitable for transport, uh, transplant. It may take several att attempts, but we have to be respectful.
all donor eyes must be accompanied by a 10 cc standard clotted blood sample or serum so the screening has to be done so the pathological lab in which it is conducted should be licensed under the west bengal state government and nacu and nari approved rapid test kits are used hard copies of all four serological tests must be attached with the donor record and elisa kit is used to double confirm in specific cases then the tissue labeling has to be done all tissues are numbered with a unique identification number name of the source i bank like suppose if it is prova i bank our i bank then peb is written the tissue identification number should be unique for each tissue and it should be it should have the number the month of collection the year of collection and the i that is r or l in case sclera then s has to be added at the end of the label type of tissue that is fakic pseudo fakic a fakic has to be mentioned what type of tissue it is mentioned date and time of donor's death date and time of corneal excision and date and time of corneal scleral preservation these all have to be mentioned tissue validity according to the preservative media is also mentioned a statement that a tissue is single use only and that is not considered sterile and recommends culturing or reculturing type of preservative media has to be noted with lot number and also the specular count after labeling all tissues are sealed by tamper evident seal all tissues are kept in quarantine until result of all serological screening test comes as non reactive and these are aseptically stored in specific racks of your refrigerator that is uh, it can be it is usually in rack number 2 for us uh, which is awaiting uh, surgical distribution at storage temperature of 2 to 8 degrees celsius vials are discarded in the event of occurrence of any change in color of the media any presence of turbidity if the seal is if the seal of the vial is open if the cap is not properly fitting and if the vial is cracked then in this case it you have to discard color coding is optional we use green for optical dissect demec and dissect de, 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 uh, dsak tissue blue for therapeutic and lk tissue and tectonic tissues and red for nsfs tissue that is not suitable for surgery so we label it as teaching and research purpose so these are some slides uh, courtesy of the prova i bank this show the uh, time from the hcrp started in 2004 the collection in utilization so it is almost 71% uh, as of now and also these are our voluntary collection and utilization uh, figures and this is the total so almost we are touching 71 to 72% this year utilization so the donor quality also differs in hcrp and uh, voluntary so we have found very good uh, to excellent tissue more in hcrp donated corneas that is almost 41% compared to 16% in voluntary and also uh, nsfs tissue volume is more in uh, voluntary cases voluntary donation so more hcrp means more younger donor and uh, these figures show that the utilization comes up, it improves to almost 84% in certain segments there are other th this data is also replicated by site life partner i banks and they have also found that the utilization of hcrp collected corneas as high up to 76% in 2013 versus 51% in the voluntary group these are the references so this is a very excellent uh, graphic designed by uh, dr samar basak sir so almost 20,000 ophthalmologists are there across the country. And even if we motivate uh, by 2005, if we can motivate five pairs of uh, collection, we can easily collect the desired amount of corneas. Thank you. Thank you for patient, patient listening. Thank you, Adito, for a nice talk. And uh, you have spoken very nicely the, in details of the, your ACP. So now we have a experienced eye banking person with us. Uh, Dr. Jayanto is there. Over to Jayanto. You want to add something? Jayanto? Dr. Jayanto Dato, are you there? Please, please unmute. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, Jayanto. Dr. Adito, can you just... Uh, Dr. Adito, can you just... Uh, Answer. Stop sharing. Stop. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Joanta. Not audible, sir, till now. 
Dr. Jayanto, uh, just can you please unmute yourself? No, unmuted. You unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Hello. No sound is coming. No. Mr. Shaugata Barman, you are here only with us. Can you help Dr. Jayanto? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you help? Can you please help us? Dr. Jayanto audible with us. So you are connected with the audio, no? Hello. So in between, we can uh, take the course. Uh, we can ask the panel to add something. It, it we have expert deeper, panel with us. Okay. We have expert panel with us. So panel uh, from panel, uh, can we enlight? You want to add something? Dr. Sayandas is there. Dr. Anil Gatta, sir, you want to add something in Aditya Sutta? That is very nicely presented. Uh, one thing I uh, uh, I think that it should be mentioned here, especially in this era, era of uh, COVID pandemic, whether the uh, each and every case, in each and every case, the sampling should be taken for COVID, RT-PCR uh, or rapid antigen testing or not in this connection during collection of cornea. Then, uh, this it's is a nice uh, queries arise. Anybody from panel, can you clarify these things? Dr. Ghatta, sir, We have with us Dr. Shayan Dash. We have with, yeah, I uh, think uh, home collection is uh, uh, not quite favored nowadays because of the lack of uh, COVID reports. But hospital collection, since we have COVID reports of those patients, uh, uh, this, it's preferred. Jayanto, are you there? Thank you, Shayan Dash, for your enlightening uh, messages. Dr. Archana, you want to add something? Good evening, all. Good evening. Uh, uh, we are going on with the voluntary as well as SCRP program. And for voluntary and SCRP, both if uh, the COVID test is not available with us, then we are going for rapid antigen test for all, our patient, for all the patients from whom we are taking. So you are uh, saying that for all the recipient, of all the I mean, disease from where you are collecting the tissue, you are doing the advice about our rat test? Rat test, you are. Okay. And uh, Dr. Jayanto, are you here with us? Hello. Jayanto, sir, please rejoin, sir. Jayanto, you please leave the meeting and rejoin. leave the meeting and rejoin. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Dr. Keshavalda, sir. You went? Yes, good evening. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, we are waiting for your some message from you, sir. Yes, you want yeah, to add something in this burning topic? No, it is it is it is covered very nicely and almost everything is. I'm also audible, no? Yes, sir, you are audible. It, yes, everything has been covered, and um, this so this COVID is obviously a problem because it is it is there in the virus is found in tear tear film and conjunctiva. So yeah. some sort of precaution should be taken. So this is one of the burning issue to uh, retrieve the tissue from the COVID during this uh, time of pandemic. So uh, at the, considering all this is a probable question arise, I had a talk with today, Dr. Mr. Kiran Shinivasan. He is actually the IMAC manager of the uh, LBPI. So I'm used to take the uh, normally, uh, I'm used to take the tissue from him also. So probably the protocol they are following, actually not the whatever that Archana was telling that they have the planning for the rat test for the, all the I mean, uh, desist from where that type the tissue. From the protocol, they are asking if the uh, from the home collection actually they ask the whether any before going to that attending this house call, they address or ask the patient at the uh, next to kin that whether in history of the fever, COVID, are there or not, or any uh, other family member having fever or not. After con confirming all those uh, preliminary questionnaires, they attend these things. Usually, they don't they don't prefer the doing the. Uh, doing the rat test uh, for all the samples. Those who are hospitalized, definitely that is already, I think the EBI is the, the clearance from the last uh, February for Kalapta, the, before the uh, your second wave, uh, home collection has been started. Meanwhile, it was stopped. Again, I think the home collection has been started. So, uh, from EBI, we have spoken to the Mr. Srinivasan also. So I don't think so. They are doing the 
rat test for all the patients what they are suggesting they wait for the two days after collection of the tissue uh, from uh, the check the media whether any something is uh, growth is there or not if suspected the send for the microbiology testers that is one of the issues i would like to just one uh, questions from the panel suppose what the already covered by our uh, uh, previous speaker that aditya if suppose we have retrieved the tissue but i am not able the technician not able to collect the blood whether we should use the tissue or not i think without blood the tissue cannot be used but this is a problem in sometimes in some centers whether we it is it is not always in the hand of the doctor and there may be other pressure uh, to use the tissue and ethical issues as well like i am taking the cornea from somebody and this but ideally i think it should not be used yes sir i will 100% agree with you yes sir yes sir can i say something yes sir please so, sir so yes, so sir. Uh, since since uh, may 2020 20, 20 till date we have collected almost 1800 corneas 1800 corneas and uh, 65% from voluntary donor because the voluntary donor is more nowadays because of hospital previously covid non covid covid or non covid so many issues are there and uh, believe me we didn't do any test we do not uh, believe in it whatever study said but the only important thing is the history from the physician who is treating that patient during last few days and history from relatives those are the only clues and we have operated almost i think uh almost 1400 keratoplasty during this procedure and each one of the patient has followed up like our follow up schedule day 1 day 3 or day 7 then day, day 14 the day 30 then 3 months and nobody has covid after transplantation so home collection is rich source suppose there is a family member your neighbor you know them or your own relative you know then uh, that there was nothing like that just like a died of heart attack or terminal diseases you just go and collect and take all the precaution so we don't do uh, any test for any any patient either for recipient or from the deceased so that is there it is like a little bit panicky in some patient even on our routine except that uh some vr surgery and some oculoplasty surgery we do certain test but routine cataract zero test so by and large we are doing fine so that is all so voluntary collection is very important in this time because hospital it is difficult because of surroundings both for the technician and the staffs and the, you know the people surrounded the hospital they are uh, more more crowded and uh, then covid non covid all all things and the personally the uh, the medical person who are very good friend of us they used to say don't take from this patient just just do that when there is a query so that that way it is going on and we didn't didn't have any problem in like last 1400 crore of plastic thank you ex- ex- very much sir for your uh, this important message in this uh, surge of pandemic definitely is it enlight us to further for, uh, just uh, go forward for collection of the home collection also thank you sir so indranil sir can we move to the next topic hello yes if there is no anybody is there to share uh, dr jayanto are you there no no not yet i don't think some technical issues are there so sir can we move on the next topic sir yeah 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 so with your permission uh, there is a little change in the schedule of the program so uh, next talk will be the setting up of an i bank in a rural area a case study 
uh, it will be delivered by the one of the eminent and expert surgeon that shubrashil ma'am and it, i was get pleasure to uh, give the introduce that that the, the well known the ma'am the shubrashil ma'am dr shubrashil she has done mbbs jnv ophthalmology and trained in cornea from lb prashant eye institute hyderabad and the moran eye institute uda usa she established low vision clinic rural eye bank and the became the first head of the institute of the ophthalmic training People and she is the head of uh, vivekananda mission ashram netra uh, niramay niketan amtola she is the recipient of mar- uh, multiple yeah. awards yeah. and the, and she has been recipient uh, admin can you the mute the others she is the recipient of the uh, aivs awards of refraction and the contact lens in 2010 and the professor a a martin indo bangladesh friendship award 2014 and dr g shitalakshmi award for the contribution to cornea services in the rural eye banking 2020 we have we have the discussion part the very vibrant young energetic dr shumana chatterjee uh, good evening dr shumana we have a long term she has a long term fellowship in cornea and the refractive surgery from the shankar netral chennai she is the cornea and the ocular surface consultant in the netral lamp super special eye hospital shunani advanced eye institute and she is also at the bbi foundation of bbi road so over to you shubhrashil ma'am good evening ma'am good evening everybody i'll just share my slide yes ma'am Okay, is my slide visible? Not yet. Not yet, ma'am. I think it's coming, ma'am. Maybe. It's, uh, um... Can you see? Not yet, ma'am. Mr. Shoga, so are you there? Can you help, madam? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's coming, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. but uh, some it's, it's i think some technical issues are there at connecting i think the report some of the technical issues are there dr shaugato mr shaugato can you help us yes ma'am it's yeah, now yeah, it's, yeah. it's now okay. is it okay now yes yeah, ma'am yeah. Uh, then make it full screen ma'am please Ma'am, below not... down. Is ma'am below down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. not. This, yeah, it... Click here, click there, ma'am. Click there. Okay, okay. okay. It, 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 is it okay now? It carry on. Carry on, ma'am. Okay. Who is? Yes. Uh, Please share it, ma'am. Share it, ma'am. You stop share. we have the discussion part uh, dr shumana with is us dr shumana are you there yes yes, yes. good evening good evening yeah 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 only so we'll be the next topic with the shubhra ma'am setting up an uh, setting up an i bank in a rural area like a study i think joint or joint to having tech, uh, yes it's coming yes it is here okay So am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, OSWB, for and Dr. Indranil for giving me the opportunity to speak in this forum. Uh, in this presentation, I'll be speaking about how we had set up an eye bank in a rural area. So, 
just sorry. It's, it's not moving. So my slide is not moving. Okay. So <clears throat> what was the motivation to start up a rural eye bank? So we got all these faces. We got this type of corneal ulcers. We treated them with medications. However, some of them needed a therapeutic uh, TPK and we referred them to other centers to get the surgery done. They were, they were all rural people. When they, when they were um, referred to the uh, other centers, higher centers, they didn't turn up there. And ultimately, they again came back to us with a perforated corneal ulcer and many of the eyes were lost. So all these incidents in motivated us to start a eye bank in the rural setup. The initial days, uh, how we started, it was inaugurated in the year 2008 by the Honorable Minister of Health, Government of West Bengal. Two of our optometrists got trained in eye banking and the concept of eye donation was quite new at that point of time in this region of Midnapur. Awareness generation was the most difficult part for, uh, for our organization among the rural mass. So what we did, the first thing after, uh, after um, when we thought of starting the eye bank, we started developing various uh, campaigning materials like the posters, the handbills, the festoons and the hoardings. The posters were developed out of our experience. People believed in the rural areas that the whole eye will be taken off and there will be disfigurement. So later we counseled them that not the whole globe, but only a small part of the eye needs to be donated. So we did a lot of group, we did lot of group meetings and we also did meetings where people could pledge their eyes. So what was the result? There was no response for two years. Suddenly, I remember on the third year, early in the morning of January, early morning, I got a phone call and that was the first, uh, uh, our first home retrieval. So this family was counseled by the grandmother of one of our iBank technician. And later when this grandmother, the grandmother of this iBank technician expired, we collected the eyes from after her demise. After eye collection, we give a certificate to that donor's family and also we provide free surgery and free eye checkup for one of the members of the family for a span of one year. This is a scene from the home retrieval and you can see the interest of the ladies and the neighboring people. So, as we all know, there is a saying called seeing is believing. One family came forward for donation, neighbors saw it and understood the importance. One and the game changer was one of the ladies in this uh, among them said, oh, only this much. It's just uh, like, a, like a piece of glass, we can give it. So they uh, now uh, understood that the whole globe will not be taken and it's only a small part that will be able to give uh, vision to the other people. So one active volunteer played the key role to motivate the others. And now we have several donor pockets from where we get several phone calls for eye donation. Next, we targeted to do the HCRP program. Right now we are doing it in three, two hospitals in Midnapur and the Tomduk district hospital gives us, gives us better yield. The third, we have targeted to get um, uh, tissues from the nursing homes. So what were the challenges that we faced during our initial days? That is during the time 2008 to 2010, 12, there was absence of blood, uh, death certificate. Uh, then the cause of death was often not known. I remember I had gone for, a, in, in the initial days, we doctors used to go for uh, eye collection. And I remember in one of the collections when I had been there and when we inquired about the cause of death, we heard that it was from poisoning. So we could not take the eyes and we had to come back. The third thing was the time lapsed after death. That also was a gray zone area. We could not find out. 
The fourth thing is the signature from the witness. Again, we went to one family, that person had three sons. The younger son, the youngest son, he was willing to give his signature in the witness paper, whereas the other two denied. And we could not convince them for the second signature. Again, we could not do justice with this uh, person. The fourth thing was the long distance. Previously, we used to get calls from around 50 to 60 kilometers away from the hospital. So you can think about the travel time. And lastly, donor parties even demanded money for funeral and for the rituals. That is the shraddha, shraddha that we call, that is held after two weeks after the death. So we addressed each of these issues, developed education materials which covered all these facts. And before departing from the hospital, we made sure that all criteria were fulfilled. And we also educated our hospital staff and the iBank staff. Every year during this iDonation fortnight, we carry out various activities to do a campaign within the district with the help of colorful tableau with message regarding iDonation, then street show drama on iDonation, sensitization workshops, school quiz programs, then we, uh, in one occasion, we also did a recipient's meet uh, where all the recipients had come. And in the another occasion, we had called all the donors. Coming to the uh, few data, from 2008 to 2020, we have done a total of 399 retrievals with home retrieval being 253 and HCRP 142 and nursing home four. Again, we see males have donated more than the females. Then the recipients data, around 646 keratoplasties have been done, both TPK, penetrating, laminar, patch grafts. And the common indications in our scenario being corneal ulcers, that is TPK for corneal ulcers. And next comes the, the different types of corneal dystrophies, corneal opacity, PBK, corneal tear, keratoconus, and limbal dermoid. Pediatric keratoplasties, we have done 24. During COVID times, we are not getting good response from the, from the voluntary uh, donation. And from HCRP, we have got 13 pair of eyes. So what is the positive change we noted after five years of starting eye banking in the district of Midnapur? First is families voluntarily donate eyes. Patients are referred for keratoplasty from other practitioners. Patients who have undergone this procedure bring more patients and rigorous awareness programs are not required, which was required during the initial five years. And now we focus more on the continuation of service and on its improvement in all aspects. So I started my presentation saying what was the motivation to start the uh, I bank and before I end I will say what is the inspiration to carry out our journey forward this is our patients all these two patients they have undergone keratoplasty in both their eyes and they are on a long term follow up they were child when they came to me and now they are uh, grown up they are the parents of kids so before I end my topic, I would like to thank Mrs. Uh, Jurit Litwin and Dr. Richard Litwin from Seva Foundation because they donated initially to start the iBank. And I even re remember Dr. Litwin used to present me with so many um, uh, punches and blades. We never had to buy for uh, initial three, four years. Then National Program for Control of Blindness, the National Association for the Blind, Tilganga Eye Institute Nepal for training the eye technicians, eye bank technicians, LB Prasad Eye Institute Hyderabad, Aravin Eye Hospital Madurai, and a special thanks to Prova Eye Bank uh, for providing us with uh, tissues when we don't have our own, district administration of Kuru Medinipur, and last and not the least is teamwork from all the staff of our hospital. So to conclude, I would like that we should all pledge our eyes and donate it. And it should not be just donate, we should 
it is not that we don't just leave a will for our loved, beloved ones. We have to live a vision. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your enlightening talk. It's really excellent. Uh, lots of information there and how it's difficult to in the strategy I bank in a rural setup is really enlightening talk. Uh, I, we have with us Dr. Shumana uh, on the discussion part. Please, uh, we wish to learn something from you also. Uh, just sharing your experience, please. Yeah. I uh, At first, I want to salute uh, Dr. Shubhra Shil and Dr. Oshim Shil for taking uh, so much effort in establishing the iBank in this setting. As I practice in the same, almost same area, I know how big the hindrances are and how much you have uh, to uh, be uh, positive for awareing the people. Uh, at the same time, uh, what I want to highlight that nowadays the awareness among the people have increased, but uh, uh, in certain ways, the communication between us and the uh, people who are willing to donate, there are some miscommunication, lack of communication actually, because people, when they ask us that we want to donate, but where to go and how to inform, how to get the information and where to inform. So we also cannot tell them properly most of the times. So what is required, I think, I think this is a just right forum uh, which can take initiative uh, to uh, uh, somehow solve this issue. If we can have all the contact numbers of the I-Banks in the West Bengal uh, and how to approach them. What are the actual call numbers that patients can use after uh, they have, apart from the pledge forms. Pledge forms which have been issued is an excellent thing. But apart from that, we also need a flyer-like thing which gives uh, the relevant numbers to the patients and we will be the mediator we can hand over to all the patients and parties coming to our centers, to all the clubs where we go for the voluntary camps, not for the eye donation awareness, but whenever we are going for the camps, organizing the camps, <clears throat> we hand over to them. I think uh, this will be a much more better initiative from our part. That's great. That's great. Yeah, the Ophthalmological Society of West Bengal is uh, planning to uh, correct the numbers and addresses also. So we are doing this one. So uh, as you, it is a uh, fortnight is going on, that the national donation place fortnight. So after that, we will uh, send to those uh, placed uh, to their WhatsApp number, the, all the I bank numbers, uh, it is the process actually is going on. Because uh, during uh, correction checkup, most of the cases, there is no valid numbers are there and most of the areas are uh, enlisted there and having uh, no eye banking or anything. So even in Kolkata, a few areas also. So we are correcting it and it will be given to all, uh, to the, our groups also. So that- That will be excellent. That will yes, be excellent. Yes, yes, yes. That's great, that's great. That can use the uh, maximize utilization of tissue also. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. obviously. If, if you have some of the forum or like that, if you know that we have excess tissue also, so that is the motto of the eye banking. That yes, whatever well, we need for CDS, not the central exactly. system that works India wide, we can make it uh, statewide. Statewide, also. exactly, exactly. If you have excess tissue, then uh, the surgeon can utilize these things also. And Dr. Shamar Bashak said is with us. I think if he motivates us, then maybe we can. <laughs> exactly. We can do something for that. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, from the panel, expert panel, uh, anybody want to add something in this nice, wonderful uh, session? Aditya is there, Aditya Prasan, not yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Madam, thank you so much for a very comprehensive talk. So, when one thinks of talking, establishing an I bank, that too in a underserved area or a rural area, any tips you would like to give to any upcoming young surgeon who wishes to practice in such an area but is daunted by the prospect that I'm only one person, how can I go ahead with this? So any tips for success that regarding permission from the authorities, the paperwork, the hurdles faced from the community, any tips you can give for, you know, for a person who wishes to replicate your model? First of all, uh, you should have the motivation 
as uh, madam said uh, in her initial talk that it is the motivation and it is the passion you should have that exactly. passion to start it then only you can uh, go uh, the official papers and all there are a lot of friends the official network you can go through them you can collect all the data but how will how you will do the awareness that is very important all these things that we discussed i discussed in my presentation eh, nobody taught me when i was in arvind i did my post graduation they had a wonderful i bank i used to see i used to go for i donation calls at lv prasad also but when i started working here i thought i have to start a i bank rural i bank for me doing a surgery is much easier rather than doing all these awareness works so it come it should come it should come from within you should love your work and you should find out ways like i showed you one poster where we were holding just a tissue a piece of tissue that was uh, so you have to think ideas as to how you can motivate your uh, clients you i didn't do i do i didn't do a very ha hard work it was my daily routine i used to follow along with that i used to think hi how, how i will prepare those ic material regarding ic material I tell we have an institute of ophthalmic training we have a lot of optometry students and um, and nursing uh, nursing uh, girls they are they are there so when i was thinking what language to coin what what should be the message i just conducted a competition among them amongst them so whatever uh, slogan you saw on the posters it came from our students and then i did a pilot study and to see whether people are really able to understand what we have uh, said in those posters so things uh, evolved in that way and indonil was there with us during that time he knows we, we used to do these things even after uh, hospital hours so again last thing i have to say is love and passion for your work that will take you take you take you miles ahead even even initially uh, to collect the cornea we have to wait for uh, at least four hours for the red certificate also we were struggling that time and it is nice to hear that uh, it has been changed if any person having uh, placed for i don't know uh, their certificate can be given by one hour so for everybody is concerned it is very important that uh, time should be as minimal as possible to collect the cornea by you that is very important that we struggled we already got up so uh, it is nice one question from uh, the audience that uh, can it there be any uh, single number like 100 like uh, uh, the police number so that anybody can call there so it is uh, i think joint venture dr somor bosak sir is there dr asim bos sir is also there so uh, question arises by dr sanjit i think probably so yeah that is is that dr sanjit is dr bosak sir can it be possible to make uh, a report we have tried earlier but the thing is that it doesn't work in west bengal so we have tried several years being secretary then president of i bank india i tried many times it doesn't work in west bengal so forget it so basically you have to what subhra has said that unless you have passion you cannot go forward yes and you have to sacrifice your family life dr asim go sir in this context i have to say that uh, uh, all, all know that there are many echo surgeons many cataract surgeons the part in glaucoma that many retinovitreal surgeon and medical retina consultant there are many consultants but how many corneal surgeons are here in west bengal they are not being involved in the samudha has said that passion you should develop the passion young ophthalmic uh, surgeons are to be insisted to practice to love cornea not only during uh, waking hours but also in the night they dream they should dream otherwise this would not be a good uh, outcome of this keratoplasty samudha has done a worst worst advancement in keratoplasty our government sector also trying but 
we have done recently among we provide bank on the to samod samodha has also helping for this and government of west bengal family welfare department has provided the permission for this we we are definitely on the way to go for a new uh, morning so that we can expect the young surgeons will come for cornea to lab cornea to keep passion con for cornea i think so thank you thank you ashim go sir is a wonderful uh, message thanks bashak sir for your uh, first experience uh, message to all of us and i would like to shubhrash ma'am thank you very much ma'am for your passionate talks and is really the passion uh, for the window of eye the corneum so uh, should we uh, indrani sir move to the next topic yes, we have yes. a very much interesting topics next one so uh, the next topic will be the maximizing utilize now we have learned the how to retrieve the tissue how to collect the tissue now the next thing is that how to maximize the utilization of the tissue so we have a vibrant young torque in the cornea surgeons group that is shoham bashak she has done the ms uh, ophthalmology from the arvind eye hospital madurai has done a cornea fellowship dishai hospital iso fellowship manchester eye ear infirmity multiple presentation national international level and the received the achievement award from the ao over the 15 peer review publication currently he is working as a consultant in dishai eye hospital and over the discussion we have the best experienced uh, dr mona marga madam good evening ma'am uh, dr mona is also my, part of my teaching part of the cornea so i have learned the basic training from the dr mona also my initial life of cornea fellowship uh, she has done the cornea dr mona has done the cornea fellowship post ms uh, from the sn chennai she is winner of the javan uh, chaman sha endorsement for the best outgoing fellow 2006 senior she is the senior consultant and the professor heading the and she is the heading the department of cornea cataract and refractive surgery department in aditya bila shankar nitla kolkata she has a multiple uh, paper posters and publications in the national international journal and her area of interest is trauma management lamellar keratoplasty including the demec so over to you dr shoham thank you dr john for the kind words and uh, thank you dr indranil sir and oswb for giving me an opportunity to speak here started yes so i'll be talking about maximizing utilization of tissues and i have no financial interest in this talk so i think whatever i'm going to speak dr radhika has summed up very nicely and i'll do precisely what she said that cornea eye banking isn't i'll be talking out of a powerpoint and i'll be showing you some excel stats at the end however the passion remains the same so getting right into the topic so what is utilization of tissue so you have to think that when the corneal donated eyeball or cornea is used for the benefit of the patient or of the ophthalmic sciences so it could be commonly what it mean is means is surgical then there is teaching training and research so this should also be included in your consent for eye donation so it should be used for the that the words of teaching training and research are to be included in your consent so that the donor family is aware that what are the uses for this tissue that they are giving to the eye bank now the various components to ensure optimal utilization so i'll be talking under the following headings so utilization begins right from attending the eye donation call as dr bajaj rightly said you should sensitize the family to prevent any exposure close the lids put a moist cotton or some ice cubes and then the team should reach on time so timely collection is the first criteria of usable tissue so this is some of the forms that we use so initially donor call also we look at what the cause of death is and from right from here we can start screening the patients also for medical contraindications then coming next to the donor selection so, so your, slide, is your slide is not moving okay i'll just stop and i'll reshare it is it visible now yes yes okay so next is donor selection so utilization can be further improved with the do correct donor selection in voluntary cases not much scope 
we have to attend the call in spite of contraindications to keep the family sentiments. However, HCRP, when we have all the documents ready with us, this allows for good donor screening. We can approach donors without any medical contraindications, relatively younger age. So we can target a good cornea right from the beginning. And blood sample is a must, as already discussed. Now, again, this is some of the donor information sheets that we use. So this detailed history taking is important. This is then reviewed at the IBank to look at any medical contraindications for use. Next comes the storage. Here, I slightly disagree with what Dr. Radhika was saying. We, I feel that intermediate storage is the way to go forwards now. It gives us 14 days to get the correct patient for the correct tissue. And also you have the surgeons, allows the surgeons to arrange for the OT. If not, MK Media gives us good four days. Moist chamber, unfortunately, only 24 hours. That is to be avoided. Go for any liquid hypothermic storage media. Then coming to evaluation. For any good eye banking where you want to optimize utilization, slit lamp evaluation and eye bank specular, this is a must. So over the last 10 years, there has been a very nicely detailed evaluation sheet has been developed with the collaboration of EBAI and SiteLife. And also there are nice slit lamp tissue holders which are available. Then you can just keep the bottle in the tissue holder and examine very nicely from the slit lamp. No need to hold it at awkward angles from the hand. And then eye bank specular microscopy is of course necessary to evaluate the endothelial cell density and other parameters. And then based on this, uh, specific, uh, if possible, technicians is fine, but if possible, a cornea specialist should grade the tissues and segregate it based on the surgical type. So this is the holder that I'm talking about. The tissue goes into the holder there is a mirror attachment which allows you to examine the tissue from the clear bottom of the glass vial. So you can see, evaluate it either from the endothelial side or flip it and evaluate it from the epithelial side. As you're doing it, any, any clinical examination, you can do a very nice layer by layer evaluation of the entire cornea. And this is the, a very detailed evaluation sheet. I shall not go into the details. Just come back, come to the right part. So we look at the overall tissue rating and then we look at the suitability and for what kind of surgical use it is possible. So this is graded by a cornea specialist at our center. Then when you're doing this slit lamp evaluation, we can have some very nice layer by layer as I was mentioning. So this is a very good quality tissue without any folds. The tissue is compact and clear. And if you magnify enough and focus, you can even make out good specular reflection in the cells of the slit lamp. And you can have a very good specular. This is to be cross-checked with your specular microscopy. And as evident, you have a very good tissue of more than 3000 cells. So why it is important, this is another example. So at lower magnification, apparently this looks like a very good compact tissue, no folds. However, on higher magnification, you see this central gut data in between this nice honeycomb appearance. And again, on specular microscopy, you realize that there are indeed gut data present. So even though the cell count is good, unfortunately, this is not to be used for any optical indications. Therapeutic, sure. Now, this is the patient pool. So as Dr. Radhika was mentioning, your demand and supply, there should be a nice bridge between the demand and supply also. So this is the demand. You should have a good patient pool. So maintain a waiting list of potential recipients at your eye bank or at your hospitals. Have them ready with all the necessary investigations. Counsel them to be ready for surgery within one, two days of call from the eye bank. Prioritize, this is according to you, but ideally based on disease and distance, maybe some other logistics. And then comes the distribution part of it. So appropriate tissue is to be issued for each surgery. So it's not that Tissue A can go for surgery X, Y, Z. So it should be tissue A for surgery X. So that, should, that modulation should be done by the eye bank. Then surgeons should be ready to work on all working days. If you have your corneal surgeon on leave, make sure that you can supply the tissue to some backup corneal surgeon. That's why it is very important to network with multiple corneal surgeons or multiple hospitals for distribution. So Durga Puja is unfortunately one of the times when we have this problem when most of the hospitals are closed but unfortunately due to festive seasons the urge to donate is more 
So unfortunately, many of these tissues do go to waste. So and national distribution via the cornea distribution system as per state regulations. Then optimizing surgical use. And as again, Dr. Radhika has already covered most of my talk. So multiple component use can be done in countries like us where we have a tissue crunch. So we can use the donor rim for any small patch grafts or for uh, uh, yeah, glaucoma valve shut covering for that. And the anterior stromal cap from the DSEC or DMEC can be used for any anterior lamellar keratoplasty, DALC or therapeutic keratoplasty. So this was first described back in 2007 by Rashik Vajpayee and Dr. Namrata. And recently due to the COVID, again, there is renewed interest in using, uh, in having one tissue to multiple recipients because there was a huge tissue crunch last year. So this is one such example. So I have done a DSEC with, in one patient and with that anterior lamellar cap, if you look at the third picture, so if this is a dermoid with ALK, so I've used the cap from the same tissue to uh, cover it up. Then tissue use after storage death. So normally, ideally, this is not to be used for surgeries, can be used for teaching, training, and research. However, given the current scenario, it is better to transfer some of these to glycerin. Keep it for a rainy day. When you don't have any therapeutic tissues, you can have the use these glycerin, glycerin stored tissues to salvage some eyes. Then a little bit about our statistics. So this is over the last 10 years. On your left, you see the HCRP, and on your right, you see the voluntary. So if you look at the last two years, as already mentioned by Dr. Samar Basak, so voluntary has been more than, like much more than what HCRP is. This is again due to the COVID, various COVID logistics. And if you look at the... Uh, between the blue and the red bar, the blue is the collection and the red is the utilization. So we have gone to almost 100% utilization. So this has happened because of multiple surgeries from a single donor. So whatever anterior caps that we are having from any DMEC or DSEC, we are using it for therapeutic keratoplasty and DAL. We are using every scleral rim possible for any crescentric grafts or patch grafts. So naturally the uh, utilization has gone up to 100%. However, previously it hovers somewhere between the 65 to 75, sometimes touching 80. So this is the total statistics. Again, climbing high in the pandemic one and a half years. So COVID and need for maximizing. So there was this initial restriction from the government in the first three months. And even now, so many months later on, the cornea collection is reduced. This was on the very first day, grim statistics from Delhi on the very first day of this fortnight. But unfortunately, the disease burden remains the same. So more stress to be given on maximizing tissues and more stress on keeping reserve tissues in glycerin because therapeutic keratoplasty is more than half of what the surgical load is. So this has led to more utilization as necessity is the mother of invention. So we, are, so we are actually having more careful and strict donor selection. So very few medical contraindication cases are happening now. Therapeutic usage, previously what used to be fair or poor grade tissues, we used to discard. Now we are using it for therapeutic usage because there is nothing else to be done. And more instances of one cornea, many surgeries. So finally, some of the messages to take back to your eye bank and to your cornea OT. First is a good standard operating protocol is I needed for improved utilization. Follow basic EBI guidelines and ensure a blood sample. Liquid hypothermic storage media, cornisol if your finances permit, that's the way to go forward. Good patient pool and at the same time, network of surgeons who are ready to operate on all the times and one tissue and many recipients in certain indications. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Shyam, for a wonderful talk. Uh, for the discussion part, we have uh, with us Dr. Mona Varga, madam. Good evening, ma'am. Very good evening to all. Actually, Soham has presented very nicely. He has covered the entire thing very beautifully. He has mm -hmm. not left much. 
but a few points which i would like to highlight is as we all know that introduced by zerm in 1905 the corneal transplantation has beautifully evolved into a safe and effective procedure which is vision restoring and the unique corneal lamellar arrangement the metabolic milieu and the advantages of the immune privilege of the cornea has uh, made keratoplasty to be one of the most successful organ transplant procedures so to ensure the maximum utilization most of the points have been already covered by soham like uh, uh, from various uh, landmark studies in eye banking all over the world we have known that uh, to ensure maximum utilization we have to uh, cross through the barriers which were there initially naming some of them the unknown cause of death lack of appropriate history and inadequate on un un unavailable blood samples or lack of trained technicians for e enucleation lack of storage media lack of uh, proper uh, tissue evaluation and zero positivity but with the advent of hcrp program it all these most of these have taken care have been taken care the grief counselors and the trained technicians which were available round the clock have led to improvement in tissue collection and thereby leading to improvement in tissue utilization as well as the tissue distribution so this has been one of the major improvements then then the next improvement is in situ collection which decreases the time and the fear in the minds of the people of collection of the whole globe might distort the eye actually the globe and then people have become more aware and that we are taking just a small part of the eye has been which has been beautifully showed in dr shubhra's talk also that how the people were convinced just seeing and comparing it to the mirror or a glass piece just taken from the eye rather than from the whole globe and the another major breakthrough was the introduction of component corneal surgery by shimura in 2004 and then by dr bajpay and the recent article in one of the igos as shown by dr soham where one uh, donor cornea was used in four recipients which uh, advent of such innovative techniques again bridges the gap between the uh, supply and the utilization then moving on to the an another important uh, aspect is the use of uh, uh, the various microkeratomes which have been available over the years which have uh, uh, pre cut tissues being available for most of the surgeons which has again made the corneal surgery simpler and especially uh, decreased time of surgery more utilization and the surgeons become more confident in using the tissues rather than having the fear of losing the tissue while doing surgery because they have the tissue already in hand which they want to just insert with a needle while doing a dissect so this has uh, made people more courageous and brave in performing the posterior lamellar surgeries and another important aspect which has been covered in various uh, blindness programs is the training of corneal surgeons which is again an important aspect in uh, removing or eradicating corneal blindness which had been taken care by the various organizations like ico asia corneal society by introduction of various fellowship fellowship programs and the various organizations non profit non government organizations like sight life and orbis which have developed various skill transfer courses to the surgeons which has made the job simpler by introdu introducing various newer modalities of surgery like various anterior and posterior lamellar surgeries layer by layer surgeries which have been introduced and made simpler by use uh, by using various demonstrative methods and videos to them through this skill transfer courses so the main aim is to bridge the gap between the demand and supply and to increase utilization which can be taken care by these simpler measures and uh, joining hand in hand between uh, these two so these are uh, some of my inputs and i would like opinion from the panel as well thank you ma'am for a wonderful talk uh, yeah expert panel are there so pan from panel anybody would like to some information we have with us and uh, tanil ghata sir dr shayan das that archana is there dr keshavald sir is there dr ashim sir that ashim sir that ashim sir is also there so we are expecting some of the good inputs in this uh, important topic to maximum utilization of the tissue because this is one of the covid time we have a shortage of tissues are there 
on uh, just uh, along with that ma'am uh, just uh, i have it on the humble uh, just uh, what is while you were retrieving the tissue uh, the scan you advocate to just taking the stem cell also but or sometimes what i have technically cut the entire whole thing at uh, uh, them starting from the your uh, corneal so considering the ocular surface reconstruction surgery uh thus excluding the covid scenario are you uh, just advocating while they are retrieving the tissue so part of the stem cell also can yeah, uh, just... it there john 2 2.5 to 3 mm rim they are taking so that includes the limbus which has yes. the yeah stem cell yeah. so that is there already in that but if to be more precise if we want to use for specific situations we can tell them and guide them to be little more careful in collecting larger rims 3 mm limbs as we tell them doing a dissect a manual yeah. dissect would require a larger rim as compared to exactly. a surgery so we have to uh, tell them accordingly because exactly because as stem cell also one of the definitely is not uh, a globe we are not using but it's also uh, acts as you trans- clear your transplant cornea whenever you are using the slate as a, a basic surgical procedure for the especially the chemical injury patients because that is one of the important source of the this bits of the stem cell tissue also so from the panel any uh, thing at uh... yes. yes sir yes sir yes sir yes. we are expecting yes sir in our uh, state at least in our state uh, we are lacking in i bank in many of the medical colleges at government level i think uh, it should be um, strengthened by establishing i bank in at least four or six medical colleges specially located outside calcutta so that we can uh, enhance the uh, i banking activities throughout the state so in this uh, in about this thing i uh, require some comment uh, from dr samar wasak please how can uh, we be able to enhance the establishment of i banking in other medical colleges apart from the Uh, RIO and NRS Medical College, Dr. Bola Vai Bank. So, during last day before yesterday, I had a meeting in RIO. Ashim Ghosh was there and principal was there and MSVP was there. So I had two meetings with RIO people. The problem is there that government do not have fund. So that is the first problem. problem so i bank making an i bank is not a problem rio is a big i bank it is non functional at this point of time so with so many staff so many doctors so many pgts and every body so what is the basically what oshim gosh was first pointed out that there is no interest among the pgts and among the teachers also so basically why I, we are going there because we know that that is a potential thing uh, potential area of explore and we have an agreement with rio that uh, one is to one if we retrieve one pair of cornea one will go to you one will we will take and we do not ask for anything from you except the premises and all these thing this is just a gesture to the government and we are discussing with the adhs ophthalmology for a long time regarding this so nrs is also now defunct so two important eye banks in kolkata are defunct so uh, who will run that eye bank in uh, say kurulia or mednipur or bahrampur medical college or malda place and then who will utilize those cornea there is none actually one or two surgeons are there but so much transferable job once he uh, established that in his own passion then suddenly he will be transferred to another place so that i bank will i know you are working in nrs very good uh, that time with a very good tempo and very good mood and everything was doing fine now government is asking us to take nrs also we said no this is just going one by one we will do some work in medical college let us see the feedback so basic problem is not the infrastructure infrastructure is there fund it is not a big fund it is a fund of say 25 lakhs 
but who will run the show? Who will be the technician? Who will be the grip counselor? Who will be the corneal surgeon? Who will be the taking the, uh, who will be the in charge of that eye band? This is all uh, deficit in, even Arayo, uh, Professor Ashim Ghosh was telling that next person should come forward to uh, revamp the corneal. I say, yes, it is very much required. So these are some limitations in government sector. Whatever I have understand over the conversation with Dr. Kollan Mukherjee, who is a junior to us, and he is very good at uh, uh, with me, with all the discussion regarding iBanking. And he said that I'm not uh, uh, able to move the things. So these are the things. Thank you, sir, for your uh, nice expense talk, sir. Definitely, it's one of the limitations. And I think that Dr. Kata, sir, also can uh, agree with this also. Though you have a patience, but there, there are some of the limitations, sir. John, one, one important appeal to the my beloved students who are very uh, efficient in corneal surgery. If we invite you to do the corneal uh, keratoplasty and other corneal works with out any honorarium. What will be the effect on you? Whether you will uh, support us to come yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. Prom yes, hundred percent, sir. Let us it's, a, it's a passion. It's a it's a passion. What we learn from our that whatever the I think I uh, whatever we learn from Dr. Radhika, Dr. Uh, Mona Vargav, it's a passion. So you have a dedication, and I hundred percent agreed with Shamar Bashak, sir. You need sometimes you have to sacrifice your family also. So last consecutive days I am reaching home after because now I'm the only working person. Uh, every day after finishing OBD, I have to do two to three DPK. I am reaching home at the end of the day. My four and a half year daughter says well, mingling claim. I am now now preparing for my presentation. It is the, it is so, the so that you have you have the passion, you sir. Be you. Very passion. Yes, sir. Uh, so I request all my juniors, all my students, those who have passed from RIO or any government sector, please, I can I can just appeal. Also, I have applied for the principal secretary so that he will look after. He has just uh, uh, spoken to me that uh, we will try Dr. Ghosh. And Dr. Boshak also is with us and he is helping us so that we can try whole, all together so that we can uh, get adequate future young corneal surgeons afterwards and, and then the corneal blindness will be treated very well and the, all the persons will be differently. So it is my request on this uh, symposium uh, seminar in this webinar. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your nice and uh, proposal. Definitely, we'll be very happy if you do something for our Almighty the Arayo Kolkata. And uh, so we have some of the uh, any questions then or uh, panel uh, from panel. Anything anybody want to add? Or should uh, and Dr. should we move to the our last topic? Last, not but the least. Uh, we have very another another important left behind. So should we move on the next topic, sir? Yes, we can. Uh, after that, we can go for discussion. Panel discussion, exactly. So we have the one of the very important uh, clinical catchy the topic, and here we have another vibrant young energetic surgeon, and that Shomanto is there. We'll cover the post-op management and follow-up of the corneal transplantation. That is sometimes what happened. The patients are uh, doing the surgery from the outside of the Bengal or some of the higher center, but it is not possible to go them if there are some emergencies are there. And they are uh, mingling from the Sandakafu to Sundarban. So we should know this is a nice platform to them to how to just having post-op care uh, to all the specific uh, post coronary transplant surgery. So we have with us uh, for this important topic that Shumanta Bera. Shumanta done MS from the RIA Kolkata DNV and FIC over Karnia. And he has done the Karnia Fellowship from the Shankar Nethala Chennai. He is the now Chief Medical Officer, Netra Nirmay Niketan, Vivekananda Mission Ashram, Chaitanyapur. He is working as a senior consultant and the corneal surgeon. He has a special interest in the lamellar corneal surgery, surface reconstruction surgery, and the ocular microbiology. And we are welcome to Shumanto. And we have a discussion part. Dr. Ankita Shah is there. Dr. Shankita has done the MBBS, MS, FICO, MRC. And she is a fellow in Kaunia uh, from the Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai. And she is a fellow general ophthalmology from the Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai. So over to you, Dr. Shumanto. Good evening, Dr. Shumanto. Thank you, Dr. John. So, okay. Is my side, slides are visible? 
Yes, you just make it full uh, full screen, please. Yeah. Now it's uh not yet. Yeah, now, it's yeah, it's perfect. Just uh, what? Yeah, it's perfect. Please. So good evening, everyone. I am very thankful to OSW to give me this opportunity. Today, my topic of discussion will be on post-operative management and follow-up after corneal grafting. Probably follow-up is the most essential part of corneal grafting surgeries. So if such a patients come to me with a very large corneal ulcer, I will do a TPK. Fortunately, the patients gain quite good vision, but this is not the last. The game is not over, rather than it's the beginning. Through the though the corneal grafting is the most successful and most commonly done tissue organ transplantation surgeries, and need less intensive follow up and graft survival management in terms in comparison to the other transplant surgeries of this era like kidney transplantation or liver transplantation. But failed graft is not very uncommon in corneal surgeons' life. There are two groups of the uh, factors which could actually decrease the vision of post-transplanted eye. One group that actually damages the cornea and the other will be the pathology related to the other structures of the eye rather than a cornea. So the first group will have graft rejection, the most common described by the literature and probably the most easy to treat if caught early. Other than this, non-immunogenic graft failure that may need a second surgery graft infections, that's really very deadly, and trauma. Among the other pathologies, like refractive surgeries, it's a very vast topic. There are a lot of theories how to manage the post-operative refractive errors to improve the patient's post-operative visions. Glaucoma probably the most important and most vital thing that needs to be monitored regularly to avoid irreversible blindness from the patient's side. And cataract, most of the patients used to have cataract if I have done the surgery in a fakey eye. Other than this, retinal problems like retinal detachment, macular uh, problems like macular edema will be there that could actually take off the patient's vision. Let us take through the uh, go through the landmark trials that has been decided, described the graft rejection and concepts of high risk graft. CCTS trial. They have rightly said that there is no great essential of matching the HLA typing in patients and recipients in terms of increasing the graft survival rate or decreasing the graft rejections. Rather than ABO matching could be a better option rather than the HLA matching. They also describe deep vascularization probably would be a risk factor for getting graft rejections. Cornea donor study, they have said that fakey, pseudo fakey guy and afakey guy will be the will have the higher risk of getting graft rejection rather than a fuchs dystrophy female may have a higher chances of graft rejections and graft rejection does not have any relation with the donor age every surgeon has their own follow up protocol and covid era particularly in covid era it's a really very big challenge for us particularly like us who are actually working in a rural setup and there are really very dark of uh, logis logistics uh, things like now there is no private or uh, no uh, public transport is available in terms of train or uh, other bus. So now in this present time, we are really facing a great problem. And for this, I will, I will describe all the things in the next future slides, uh, how we are facing the problem. And getting the complicated things due to the irregular follow-ups. So first two weeks is the critical to detect the primary graft failure. Is the, if the graft is not getting clear in first two weeks, probably it's the primary graft failure. It could be due to the acute graft rejections, most common in recurrent graft transplantation surgeries, or it could be due to the uh, low primary low uh, endothelial cell count. First month will be very vital for the graft acceptance. Here we have to look for the suture, uh, loosening of the suture or graft host junction malappositions. First year is the most crucial time 
for the graft rejection, though the risk will be there at any time. My uh, regular schedule will be post of day one, then day seven, day 14, one month, then for the first year, two to three months. And after uh, one year, there will be two to three times per year. But in our settings, it mostly depends on the patient's weight. Treatment, well, I will start with a topical steroid, mostly 1% prednisolone acetate, and we'll taper it seven days till one times a day. And I would like to continue that one times dose for the one year, first year. Along with it, few uh, first few weeks, I will prescribe lubricants along with anti-glaucoma on the case basis. Glass at one month, I used to prescribe glass if the cylinder is less than 3.5 with proper binocular balancing is possible. If it is not possible or cylinder is too much, then probably I will go for the tobo guided suture removal. After one year, I used to switch off to fluoromethalone in place of prednisone. So this is the five points of graft, uh, graft evaluation. So these five points is the most essential point that has been taught to us by our uh, teachers in uh, SN Chennai. So first will be graft clarity, along with it anterior segment uh, photo documentation, along with tacky and specular twice yearly, six monthly. I used to do anterior segment photography, tacky and specular two times in a year. Then graft host junction, you have to look for the malapposition of the graft host junctions. Probably that may lead to increased amount of astigmatism. Loose sutures need to remove as early as possible. Peripheral anterior shiny gear, particularly at graft host junctions, would lead to uh, graft rejections and vascularizations will be a really risk factor for the future graft rejections. Look for glaucoma every visit as obvious reason. Evaluating for evaluation for the glaucoma in post-transplanted eye is not very easy. There is difficulty in doing bonioscopy very, as the patients have very high amount of uh, refractive errors. They might have problem with doing automated perimetry. So classically, the disc evaluation, disc drawing or photo could be the most crucial to evaluate or to monitor the progression of the glaucoma in such eyes. Astigmatism management, that's a really very big chapter and it's better to leave to the primary surgeons. So as, the, um, as we are facing COVID and there are some problem with the referral uh, and the follow-up, so I think our general ophthalmology friends could help us to uh, keep all the, all the patients in their, uh, in their examination and uh, do little bit or uh, little bit of uh, changing their uh, treatment or little bit of intervention to save the corneal graft. So uh, what you ca can may face when you are actually evaluating a transplanted eye, there could be graft edema with or without capes. So here you can actually just increase the topical steroid dose and look for one or two days if it is not getting uh, improved, then you can refer uh, to, a, uh, to the primary surgeon. Graft infections, this is really a very deadly situations and you need to take the patients on urgent basis and you have to start a broad spectrum antibiotics as early as you can. And you can send the patient to the primary surgeon or the centers where the uh, microbiology is available. Trauma and graft hose junction dehiscence needs to be uh, take a, taken to the OT for the resuturing. If you can do that, it really will be very grateful, great to us. Loose sutures, it's a very easy procedure. You can remove the loose suture on your own OPD. Uh, and you can, uh, after that, you need to hike up the steroid if there is no graft uh, infections and starts uh, antibiotic for seven days. Uh, uh, this, uh, enhance, uh, this increase of a uh, uh, topical steroid is most essential because you are uh, making some injuries to the graft. So that can actually have a little increase in the graft rejections. Early loosening of the sutures, particularly in cases of TPK within 15 days, it could be a sign of recurrence of the infections. Now I am going to uh, take you through some of my cases which I have faced during this uh, post-COVID era and all the patients are really uh, taking to the bad side and we, due to the irregular follow-ups. 
So these particular patients, one eyed patients, the other I already have done uh, two times of uh, two TPKs, and after that, due to glaucoma, that I goes into no PL. After that, I taken the uh, second eye and done a optical keratoplasty. It was a patient of uh, uh, macular dystrophy. It was around late 16 or early 7, uh, late uh, 2016 or early 2017. But after the arm fan cyclone in Bengal, we had a three bunch injury and presented to me in the month of May with a corneal infections. After that, 15 days, it was really getting on the worsen side. That time I does not have any tissue and probably May, June 2020, there was no collection at all. So I had a uh, glycerin preserved cornea. So I taken to the, uh, the patient to the OT. I have done a TPK along with Gunderson flap because I know this patient is not going to come to me within the next few weeks. After that, what can be done to this patient? The only thing that has been remained in uh, in uh, hand of mine will be a keratoprosthesis. So I went with a orocapro along with Adival. But these unfortunate patients again went home and came after two months with a very high grade of vitreitis along with multifocal choroidal detachments. And you could see a membrane behind the prosthesis that is the detached retina. And our retinal surgeon does not able to do anything for these unfortunate patients. The next patient, this is also a one-eyed patient, developed a corneal uh, graft infections. It was a gram-positive organism, well treated with antibiotics, have done a second PK, and this patient is actually having a aniridic and aphakic. But after three months of this graft, he developed ARD. This is a lady. This is the picture of second time graft rejections treated successfully with IVMP. And you could see the enhancement of the graft clarity. These patients, second PK I will in 2017. He called me in uh, early uh, May 2020 that he is having some problem in his patients. He sent me, sent me some pictures in WhatsApp. I could re remember, recognize that it's a graft rejections. I asked him to hike up the steroids, but in Bakura, he could not able to find out any stores where he could avail the prednisolone acetate. And in December 2020, he comes with a failed graft with graft scarring. These patients, the uh, PVK patients, he was my first BSEC patient in 2016. He was lost to follow up after 2019. Came just few days back with a graft failure. These patients underwent optical keratoplasty, had developed glaucoma, but he was very anxious patient. So we have correctly done a trap in this patient just few months back. With this, I would like to give some keynotes so that our general ophthalmologist friends also get some motivation to take all these uh, patients and do a little bit hot according to their convenience to help these patients. Lifelong follow-up is must for any post-transplant patients. Our general ophthalmology friends could help us in regular follow-ups and referral on case basis. Look for the high risk signs Many times your little intervention could save the patients from getting blind. You just need to check few specific points and could assess the graft health easily. Let us celebrate our professional brotherhood by working together for our patients' life. Thanking you, my acknowledgement, Dr. A.K. Seal, MD VMA NNN, Dr. Subra Seal, ma'am, and Dr. P. Ali Konar, MO Cornea Services. Happy Teacher's Day to all of my teachers beforehand. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shumanto, for a wonderful talk and the case scenario you have shared with us. For the discussion part, we have with us...
i think she is not with uh, some technical issues are there we can we can uh, ask the expert panel to add some dr yeah, ankita yes uh, yes can you hear me yeah 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 yes we can, yes. We can. Yes. good evening dr ankita good evening uh, to everyone yeah. yeah we are waiting for your uh, discussion part so can yes. you just uh, would like to add something over the dr shumanta yes i would like to thank dr shumanta sir for such a wonderful talk and i hope with the valuable points that you have mentioned we can expect to see better management of post pkp patients and uh, better graph survival rates in the coming times so i actually have a few questions for sir if sir you could answer them so as you have rightly mentioned that every surgeon has a uh, has his own uh, follow up protocol for post keratoplasty patients so but in times of covid we see that uh, many a times uh, post keratoplasty patients come to us with failed grafts so how important do you think that in this time of covid era how important is the role of telemedicine for proper follow up of such patients and uh, if you can add any more points in the follow up protocol that you have already mentioned that could help our general ophthalmologist uh, to have a proper follow up of the patients post keratoplasty dashmanto so you are asking me that uh, dr ankita has <laughs> the, we are expecting uh, dr ankita so dr ankita is asking uh, dr shumanta also to share the your experience dr shumanta what is you are thinking that what's the role of the telemedicine here good question uh, yeah obviously so i think covid has uh, taught us the next level of ophthalmic care that is the telemedicine so uh, there are classical telemedicine uh, appliances are there like uh, uh, internet connected uh, slit lamp uh, cameras all are there but uh, if you are talking my about my experience as we are working in a very remote places and most of the patients will not have that kind of setup yes. so i think whatsapp could be a uh, alternative way and uh, probably uh, Asim sir is there or not? Uh, he had uh, actually developed a uh, network of, of WhatsApp group in our uh, total chain systems. So the patients can actually uh, send some picture, uh, just taken in the uh, just draw a uh, picture of the eye, and you can actually enlarge that pictures in your own mobile, and you could find out some salient points. Just like that, patients of of mine who has undergone. Uh, Optical keratoplasty, and uh, uh, I will in 2017. When he just sent me the picture, and when I enlarge the cornea, I could actually realize the clarity of the cornea. That glistening thing is not there. So that's really add some uh, added value on your uh, judgment apart from the patient symptoms. The other patient, that first patient, what I have actually uh, described in the first case is where I have done a OROK pro. so that patients also used to call me from a home, from his home and and he sent some pictures and i could see that he is actually his uh, corneal graft infection is getting on the worse hand side and but the uh, the communication was really very bad at that particular situation it is around uh, june 2020 so uh, it, it does not help me out because of a uh, uh, lack of uh, communications lack of a uh, Uh, public transport and that patient is really very poor so if the other factors are not that much of uh, important like uh, patient's economy all those things probably whatsapp through whatsapp you can uh, advise the patients uh, uh, whether he needs a urgent uh, uh, visit or he can wait uh, some times uh, in their home or some you can just adjust some uh, treatment protocol uh well and uh, just i would like to add something with dr shumanto dr ankita what thing is that actually we learned from the shankar netra right? we have a nice rapport with our co fellows and colleagues so you can build up a nice rapport with pan india we have a pan india whatsapp group also so suppose i uh, due to the i mean hell i mean working in the uh, shankar netra we have a pool of patients from the bihar up jharkhand also so really that is the, uh, that uh, your covid time we have learned so many new things so i recall to i am sharing what my own experience i have one one eight patient from the ara district of bihar so he had a already uh, i have done the second time transplantation one i already lost for the glaucoma and the one i having the failed uh, graft failure for the your hsv 
so that lady was having the post uh, your keratoplasty having uh, the, your penetrating keratoplasty she having the vision for 6 by 12 amber she was very happy but during the covid time she called me rang me and they are very religiously follow up with me every three months whatever that shamanta was telling the protocols so suddenly on all sudden she has a drop of the vision was there and she had a viral fever or something like that it's not a covid man there is a then i asked them to immediately consult a local ophthalmologist the tragedy was there the local ophthalmologist they, they are actually they uh, what the shamanta was telling that they don't have the uh, your peninsula no wise they are so in remote, remote interior places and they are keeps on whatsapp the food send me the photo in the whatsapp i try to find it out but it was seems like maybe the person having the rejection probably but uh, nobody want to touch the eye and the, during the surge of the last year 2020 month of may june that is the inter whole lockdown was that they are not able to come also due to the your pass or all those things when they come to us after the one and a half month when the transport little were available in month of june so that time actually already the graft was already failed so thing is that if you have a good rapport with your colleagues or your co fellows from here doing the fellowship or you have a good rapport at least those who have the and some training for the corner they can recognize your problem if they start the treatment their own then that that is one of the good thing uh, not only that the shamanta was sounding that that is a, you have the patient i mean the telemedicine facility is not available now you are not in a western country like a developed country so whatsapp is one of the good resource but you have if you have a good rapport even also the, your general ophthalmologist colleagues those who having the some sort of having some practice issue with the cornea also they have knowledge of the cornea you can rapport with them so that is one of the things you can take care of those patient that is one of the issue but uh, that is definitely the helpful but so that even even suppose i have a patient those not have suppose able to come from the north bengal the lockdown time especially we face the patient from, from the your bangladesh also we ask them you can go to ispahani you can go to the your harun i care whatever because there we know this place having the cornea specialist so this is one of the way you can just uh, short out this burning issues we have with us um, i think uh, dr bashak sir and we can uh, definitely he can enlighten us uh, this oh. things so the problem is there because of covid era and all the communication etc so i always say that uh, uh, transplant surgery is just like a marriage just like a marriage i give this analogy some of you might have seen my slides that case selection is very important that is just like your partner selection so case selection means partner selection so marriage part that means operation part is easy case selection is the second part so you have to select the right cases in this particular time so geography is very important where the patient is uh, today i refuse to do one patient kepro kepro during this pandemic period i have done only two in one and a half years i usually used to do 18 20 keratoplast uh, kepro in a year so two those are those patient are my neighbors just like between 10 kilometers that's all so selection of cases is very important that means partner and otherwise the follow up what shumanta had said the keeping the honeymooning period third part so marriage partner selection and keeping the honeymooning period for a longer period of time that means 5 years 10 years 10 year 15 years 20 years then in do you then actually you will enjoy the transplant surgery so from the very beginning you have to think that should i do this i i give certain clause to the patient do you agree this point no sir so i will not do you put anti glaucoma drop you will be doing maybe after six months you make up your mind like that you take up like only the emergency surgery is you have to do that is one side of the story another side which is sutureless surgery either dissect and demuck then you have less take your patient loose suture the problem of loose suture and all the sequences happening after the loose suture that will also not be there only thing you have to take care of secondary glaucoma if one follow up you can break your follow up for a longer period of time so 7 days 3 weeks 1 month you see that everything is fine okay you come after 6 months or 1 year and you tag one of your colleague locality and demect patient dissect patient the examination is much much easier than your pk cases 
PK cases, suture removal, people do not want to do. In West Bengal, there was a case, medical legal case happened, and I was the third party in that case. So unless that operating surgeon give in writing uh, the permission, even I get the mail from uh, Prabin or Gita or somewhere that Bashak sir, will you do this needful? I said, yes. I, I asked the patient because that case, the surgeon has to pay 16 lakhs rupees. He removed the suture in the outdoor. I, outdoor means clinic only, private, private. A loose suture, just a banners and, and that patient somehow developed infection and the whole eye got followed by panophthalmitis. And evisceration, this is the sequence of event of a suture removal done by somewhere big institute in the south. Suture removal done in a poor ophthalmologist like that cataract surgery, like those are ECC days. So every day he used to cut suture na, in ECC. Similar way he cut the suture of keratoplasty, one loose suture. And the sequence happened that. So, that's why even in our hospital, we do not remove the suture for keratoplasty patient done by other, unless we get a written permission from the operating surgeon. Because this is happened medical legal case and he is very close to us. I was the third party because I, I had written that endothelmitis uh, and panophthalmitis, no, uh, no PL and go for uh, evisceration, you please take second opinion from other institute. So it is not easy to follow up this patient. But we always can say that our fellows are cornea fellows, but they have their own limitation. Suppose uh, that applanation AT, AT during AP, we know that after keratoplasty, epithelium remains loose for a longer period of time. And corneal ablation followed by keratitis, followed by gone. It happened. It happened in our own hospital. We managed. But it can happen to outside also. So that way, it is not so easy to say that, okay, WhatsApp, images, these are good additional advantage of, but ultimately, you have to call the patient. So during this pandemic where whatever cases you do, except emergency, you just keep them in track. That aap karoge kya nahi karoge. Aap aap aoge kya nahi. Agar nahi aap aoge, chod do. Abhi karna nahi hai. These are cold cases. So you wait for three months. See, you take another case who can easily follow up with you. So Ankita, have you Got your answer. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you sir. Uh, thanks for your sharing the, your experience, sir. Thank you. We we'll definitely follow your advice, sir. Uh, over to panel. Anybody want to add something? I think this is dinner time now. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. uh, we have we have with us Dr. Ashim Shil sir also has a vast experience in the work in the rural city. Yes, sir. Ashim, good evening, Ashim Sil, sir. You would like to uh, uh, anything enlighten us? He's not present, I think. Yeah, it was really the wonderful session, and really we are thankful to Diana Bhaptalmoli, Shamar Bashak, sir, Vivitas, and I hear answered the things. The teachers very nice. We have learned so many things from uh, you, so sir. Another important thing, even though you are not taking money for the surgery. He is a poor guy. I will do a one very nice one I do. do. Whatever you do, that will fail ultimately because that patient will not follow you. So it is also important that patient should have 2,000 rupees to spend. We have calculated this figure. Every month he has to spend whatever surgery you do for medicine, for follow-up, for whatever the average calculation is every month he has to spend for 2,000 rupees. Unless he do that, 
unless he, like we used to do initially the government cases from chief minister funds. We stopped all that for a long time back because we know that next, we'll do the follow-up, nobody is there. We'll there to put the eye drops in their eyes. So you will do very good uh, optical PK one eye. The village people, next day he will go to the field and uh, next month he will come with the corneal So We have had enough experience. So it is not that the surgery partner selection is very important, partner selection, that you do the surgery, tell certain things, tell certain things, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that these you have to follow for next, say, two years, three, unless all the sutures are removed, and then only you can go to the field or whatever. You can go to the labor, so these are happening. So you have done a beautiful job. You know that you are doing a good job, but ultimately keeping the honeymooning period for a longer period of the time is very difficult. And that way, DMEC is forgiving, DSEC is forgiving, PK, all sutured surgery, even DAL is horrible experience in our, even those doing uh, bigger center, because we have the only that uh, experience that our patients come to us only. Our patients do not go to other places, but other uh, big institute, they have all referral services from different corners they used to get patients. By and large, we get 90% of our patient, money recipient population belongs to Bengal only. So they come to us only for any problem because they know they do not have to go outside. They can talk with their own language. They can come often. So we have a very good database in that way. And we are now, even though indications are there, we are selecting the partners. So case selection is number one issue. So your many problems will be solved unless they understand what is the follow-up. So you cannot go for surgery. Sir, I can understand your concerns, but when you are working in such a rural setup... Now then you have to choose the right patient. Three, four the... patients, even if you do less, doing a nice job and ultimately after one year, bringing to zero, it is the same thing as happening. We have not by experience over the last, say, 25 years. So actually, so when you says, patients, they are very interested. They will say everything. Sir, I will come. I, there will be no Ultimately, problem. Ultimately, they don't come. They will be encouraged uh, about their uh, convince what they are uh, promise. And you go with that. Actually, this, this is, you can say, this is my... not, They always compare with cataract surgery. Even, exactly. even exactly. You, you, you do whatever, they ultimately compare with cataract surgery. Then uh, yes. everything happens. This yes. thing, this even sequence of, of things head. happens. This six line vision, he used to complain, I have uh, reduced vision, I have, I have not gained a proper vision. Uh, that is another the other story. I mean, like the keeping the graph survived for five years is a huge task. Obviously. So okay. I have patients of more than five years. I am working for last seven years over here. I have graph for now five more than five years. But even though there is some surprise, sometimes patients even have not put the drops, even in spite of that, they have a clear graph. And there will be some patients who have just uh, avoided putting drops for 14 days or three weeks, they have had a graft rejection. So these are really very but you have to go your own rule. Nah, your own rule, what? Exactly. What the sir was telling that selection of the case is most important. Yes, meaning that for long time effects of these things. And then you're learning from the sir also. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes.
yes yes something go sir so you want to add anything uh, okay 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 thank you thank so you. Uh, i would like to introduce sir to please vote of thanks to all of us we have extinguished uh, dayana bhakta mallaj with us enter whole evening shamar bashak sir and the teachers so many things thank you sir from bottom of my heart i am really thankful to you and uh, thanks to all the extinguished panelists uh, thanks to all of you sir give you the vote of thanks over thank to you, you very much sir all the all the don boys मोर ब्यूटीफुलेशन एंड द टॉपिक so that i thank i am very thankful to oswb president secretary for their this type of good uh, symposium and webinar in the national uh, i donation for ninth week so that uh, i am con- congratulating dr indro neel dr john thank and also i am a member of executive committee of oswb i also feel very proud that we have done a good uh symposium and webinar regarding this i donation i banking and all the panelists are very uh, good uh, justified and properly uh, questioned about the uh, queries and also samordha uh, samordha is the story of corneal grafting in the eastern region also in the national level international level so i am very 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 thankful to him so you just uh, uh, indroni live just to yes. do, uh, say something uh, at the end and the finish thank you very much thank you very thank you ashim go sir, sir. Uh, thank you very much sir and he is one of the most when a pgt friendly most energetic and he has a huge and as a always when it does keen to teach you thank you very much sir thanks all for the, 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 the all the you were thanks to all of you the viewers i must thank to uh, thanks to ipka laboratories also for supporting this program and uh, i must thank i am thankful to uh, shogoto barman also for organizing this uh, technical aspect very beautifully and lastly i am very much thankful to dr john sarkar for beautifully uh, moderating the session thank, thank you. you sir good night thanks. Thanks, OSWB. Thank Thanks. Thanks. Good night to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you all. Good Thank night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.